Well. Well. There goes the neighborhood. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Welcome on this Saturday morning. December 14th, I love your shirt. 2000. Isn't this wonderful? That's such a beautiful color pattern. It's the brown you like. Is it? Yeah, it's checkered. You know, I like flannelly kind of checkery it, things. Like, it's black and brown, and or is it navy? I can't tell. No, it's a, it's a little bit of black turning into gray, and then oh, red. Navy. It's reddish brown. It's I lovely. Like a rust color. It's beautiful. Yeah, because rust never sleeps. But I got a good night's sleep, ladies and gentlemen, to do this episode of the Dave's Gone By Show, our yeah. ninth. That's right. What? You look very weird because you're wearing a final shirt and shorts. Well, they, they can't, they don't really see you below the titty line oh, no. on camera, except when I get up to do Bunyan Watch. Are you doing that today? I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping we have Bunyan Watch today, because that would be a very Give good thing. Give me your phone in case you freak out, Marie, I'll tell you. Oh, <clears throat> here, here we go. I have Bunyan Watch. <laughs> Well, no, she doesn't. Pre she, Bunny watch. She doesn't mind. It's my old phlegm. I think that kind of threw her. Um, Which we may. I'm. One of the segments that we do is called Bunyan Watch, where you actually look at the size, the shape, the, the condition, perhaps even the texture of my foot bunions, as opposed to my head bunions. Today? I'm sorry. What? Is that going to happen? I'm, I'm, I'm. Most likely, we will have Bunyan Watch today. <laughs> However, <laughs> one of our other segments. More recent, much more recent. Please don't talk about it while I'm eating, please. I'll vomit. All right. Well, let's just say it might happen. I'm feeling it might happen. I'm not promising. Please don't. It might. Also on the segments, uh, or, or among the segments of today's episode of Dave's Gone By, will be Greeley Times. This is where, for many years now, the Greeley Tribune newspaper in northern Colorado will get the log of phone calls that come into the local police department, the, the police dispatch, from people who are seeing crazy things happening in their neighborhood. There are drones flying over New Jersey, except it's not New Jersey, it's, it's Colorado. And they will call the police, and the funniest phone calls, with the identifiers all stripped out for HIPAA, FERPA, and whatever rules they have, they're, they're published in the paper once a week in a column called Cop Log. We take a look at the log, and share the best ones with you on our segment called Greeley Times. So we have that happening on Dave's Gone By Today too. Plus, we go back to story time. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been reading the, um, the incredibly beautiful and poignant story of this seemingly hydrocephalic man, H.J. Hines, who, <clears throat> who was... H.J. Hines, the creator the potatoes are not happy about of being... It's a magnificent book. I don't know what the potatoes are upset about. It started a little slowly. It started with Hines's childhood Boring. and working on the farm. And what did they say? Boring. Boring. And the, but then, chapter Boring three, which we read last week, it gets to ketchup. It gets to him making ketchup, you know, his wife and family making ketchup in their own kitchen, Naming it, showing that, that Heinz uses clear bottles so you can actually see what's in it, which was a revolution and a revelation for people who were buying consumer goods back in the day, right? So these are, these are all things that H.J. Heinz was doing. Nothing, and he had, he was kind of like a, not, not just a Donald Trump figure, but he, he went through bankruptcy, paid his creditors back. Boring. And, well, we're going to read. How? What are potatoes expecting from this book? Pictures of ketchup. Ah, ah, uh, there was. Behold, potato. Hold on. Here, look, look. Here's an early version of a glass. Boring. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait until it gets to the good it's stuff. It's not red. It's just kind of picture color. Well, it's a black and white book. Look, look, look. Where's red color? Well, if I come, this is a why library. Does have, why does he have uh, children and women making it? It was back in the day, <laughs> back in the day, Ch and children make a, a really good two cents per hour when they were, when they were, were working 14 hours a day and, and mashing their hands up. Yes, yes, yeah. H.J. Henry Hines, ladies and gentlemen, we will be reading at least one more chapter of this magnificent biography of 
the man who created ketchup, which of course potatoes love more than anything. Oh my God. Oh, you know. I mean, well, you know, next next time I'll, I'll read Edith Wharton or something. Boring. I gotta say, I'm reading <clears throat> or listening to. I have <clears throat> been listening Boring. to. Thank you, potato. Mm. In the car, I've been listening to all your books. I'm like great books. And I, first, I listened to Edith Wharton's not the House of Mirth, but her other. Yes, it was the House of Mirth. Mm -hmm. And then Boring. Henry James's Washington Square. And they're so, you know, they're, they're, the, the writing is so fantastic in a way I couldn't even appreciate back in like the 20s and, well, in my 20s and 30s of, of like just slogging through prose like this and not appreciating it and just scanning through to get to the dialogue. That's because you like things that are boring. Well, in contrast, I thought, you know, I got, I, I finished the James book. I finished the Edith Wharton book. Let me have like a palate cleanser. Let me have something that's really straightforward. And, and the prose is much more terse and so forth. Mm -hmm. What could be more than that than Hemingway? Oh, Hemingway, oh, boring. So, I, yes. So, I've, I've got a Hemingway book in the car, because it's like short stories, which are almost like microfiction. And so far, I've got, so I was looking forward to it, and now I'm like, boring. compared boring. to the writing of Wharton. <laughs> I don't make, oh, you know, the potatoes are in the car when I'm listening to all these things. Oh, super boring. <laughs> yeah. But I'm so disappointed. Maybe it gets better because these are not his novels. I'm not reading The Old Man in the Sea or The Sun Also Rises. They're I don't little... need my calm patch anymore for sleepy time. Cause you, cause you, well, Hemingway is It's just it goes nowhere. Mm -hmm. It's like a scene out of a novel that doesn't really... Like, it's just like, okay, then this happens. All right, fine. All right. Uh, this pregnant woman you know, gives birth and then her husband cuts her his throat. Which you figure would be meaningful in some ways. It's not! Yeah, uh, two guys go fishing, two guys go skiing. It's like, all right, and Boring. yeah. So I've got four, like five more discs of the Hemingway to get through. Maybe, maybe I'll change my mind, and maybe by the end of it, I'll be like, ah, oh, you know, his. I should teach this in my writing class because he strips away all the unnecessary. Yeah, he strips all all the storytelling away and he just gives a scene. Thank you. It's one of the reasons why modern short stories sometimes are like, okay, and. You, you don't feel, when you read uh, Henry James and Edith Wharton, you don't feel okay <coughs> and. You feel like you've been through a psychological story of, of amazing depth and technique. Anyway, what's going on, babe? Well, oh, 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 before I forget. Other things going to be happening on this episode of the show. Yeah. We have a guest. Boring. Ah, uh, Potato. Our guest is not boring. Not boring. Our guest is not Sexy boring. Sexy boring. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yes, our guest is the charming, sexy, lovely, uh, fine actress who has been on and off Broadway for, for a few years now. In fact, she is a two-time Tony nominee for uh, one for the Broadway revival of the off-Broadway play Proof, which is a wonderful play. Uh, or, no, actually, I think it debuted on Broadway and might have even won the Tony at that point. Plus, she was in a couple of years can ago, I, the, the show, is it boring? I, I'm can boring. I, can I be in Wicked? Can you be in Wicked, Potato? Well, you have the hat. <clears throat> do you have, what else do you need for, for Wicked? Nothing. Can you, do potatoes see color? Could they follow a, a yellow brick road? No, boring. <laughs> um, anyway. She was also, this is so cool, in the original off-Broadway version of Paula Vogel's landmark play, How I Learned to Drive. And then they revived the show like two decades later, and she was in the revival, along with the original stars David Morse and Mary Louise Parker. So that's kind of cool. And Johanna Day is also doing some off-Broadway now. As a matter of fact, you can see her in the brand new play Pen Pals, an epistolary drama. I want to get this album. Like that in the car. Oh, I love, I love that. All right. So, Johanna Day talking to Rabbi Saul Solomon what on the show today. Daddy, what time, What uh, time? Somewhere in the 10 o'clock hour. I'll get my ketchup for that time. But one of the things that I do like and follow on my Facebook feed is bad album covers. It's this, this wonderful collective. I mean, it's not, <coughs> not fakey things like Conan O'Brien used oh, to do. These are, these are real, actual album covers, including... <laughs> 
Chris, what's his name? Hardesty? Chris Housley. Yeah, he's in Dance, dance, dance. He's a DJ. Because yeah, he gets the chicks. He gets the crowd moving. Oh, yeah. He, he gets the... I think he gets the bowels moving more than anything else. Pump up the volume. Probably. But I do. Like, I used to love Dave's record collection on um, on Dave. Somebody Lennon. wrote, "He will also help you with your tax return." Hum, <laughs> 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 okay. go out of the room. Mm. We do have it. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen. Eh. Do when you're done. All right. Well, you're gonna have to close your eyes for a while. So, ladies and gentlemen. Oof. I did almost promise this. We said that um, I might, might be doing the segment My Old Flim on this episode. What it has to do with was I was I had a cold a few weeks ago. And I've got this probably lingering long COVID thing too. So in the mornings, I, and I'm also 60 years old, right? I'm an, I'm an elderly geezer man now. So I have the thing that old Jewish men have. Where you wake up in the morning, you're like, ah, yeah, you clear your throat, and there's there's phlegm lodged somewhere in my upper bron. Luckily, in my upper rather than lower bronchi, and it's got to come out. And it, it isn't until I talk a bit and move around and have a little coffee with milk that then the phlegm goes. All right, it's time to come up, come to come up. Blah, blah, blah. What I did rather spontaneously on an episode a couple of weeks ago was I couldn't stop the show. It was live. And it came up during the show. I was like, I coughed and like, woof, and clogged it in my handkerchief at that point. And then, you know, when life hangs through lemons, you make lemonade. When life hangs through phlegm, you, you, you make phlegm cocktails or something. So I looked at it. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, and I started doing um, psychic predictions, kind of like in a Tyler Henry sort of way, by the way people read tea leaves, right, or upside down uh, things in a cup or read their, your palm. I can read phlegm. So today's phlegm reading, here's, here's, here's what came up, part of what came up. It was more, more mucus and liquidy. Uh, so in the yellow range, and kind of lengthy, it has, what is the look of this thing? I'm going to need my glasses. Please stop. I'm going to be sick. <laughs> I'm really going to be sick. I told you to leave the room. I can't. It, it's... Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, maybe I'll save this for later. Okay. Uh, segment over. But... I'm glad to share at least uh, some of my old phlegm with you here in the neighborhood on our 971st episode of the Dave's Gone By Facebook Yo Podcast, Yo Program Yo Over the Stream, which, as you can see, mixes a lot of different things together, from bunions to phlegm to special guests to weird neighborhood phone calls coming into the police department to what else? Oh, oh! Again, because my wife and I lived in Colorado for a bunch of years, we have, um, I, I, I decided to, and I have no idea why I did this, write poems about as many places in Colorado as I possibly could. And, you know, just looked on a map at a certain point, or, or just the names that I knew of things like Greeley, where we lived, and, and Vale, uh, which we never actually got to, and Red Rocks and so forth, and, and make up as many filthy, raunchy, awful limericks as I possibly could. And I did, and kept doing it long after we moved away from Colorado. It was like four and a half years ago already. And, and I've still been doing new ones as best I can every single week. And so, yes, my friends, we have more than 300 of these limericks, which you can read at my website, davelefkowitz.org. Just look for Colorado Limericks of the Damned. But you can also hear a brand new one every episode. And today, my friends, today we have a relatively easy one. We go to Bloom, Colorado. There was, I, I was, can't say that there is a Bloom, Colorado, but there was. It's a ghost town that existed a century ago, just about. But it did exist. Bloom, oh, we have Bloom. Oh, here we go. They mean, you know, the coming of Yes. Bloom. Here's another album cover. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the sounds of his coming, which the, certainly the daughter doesn't want to hear. I don't think the wife wants to hear them either. Uh, yeah, and what, what's the name of the... These are the Smith Trio. 
Why? But it's so many <coughs> of the worst album covers, the worst are, are gospel records. I wonder why. Maybe they have low budget. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're done, they're pressed like a hundred copies of something. But I mean, this is perfectly fine. Like, let's Family. go to the Walmart studio. This looks like Sears photo. Yes, there. yes, exactly. And stand behind a nice backdrop. It's a perfectly nice picture. And yet it's uh, the photo and, of course, the title. The title of the album is, is pretty spectacular. Anyway, so um, Colorado Limerick of the Damned, where we go to Bloom, Colorado, for a poem that is going to be, how bad is it? Is it going to be clean today? Or is it going to be dirty today? Let's, let me take a quick look. I'll give you a preview. It's, oh, kind of dirty, kind of sick, which is sort of my favorite. So it, 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 on, the, on the dirty scale, it's probably about a six. On the six scale, it's about a nine. Oh, so no. yeah, coming up later in the show, our Limerick of the Dam for Bloom, Colorado. And that's it. That's going to be <clears throat> our show. I hope we'll have time for Maybe <clears throat> we'll do Dave's Big Dictionary. Maybe not. But what else? What else? So in terms of this week, oh, we also have to say farewell, a fond farewell. I'm amazed he didn't predict this coming. Oh. But we did lose our friend of the neighborhood a couple of Dave's days, a couple of Dave's ago, uh, George Kresge, a.k.a. much better known through his life. Let me make sure. Oh, I, I didn't make enough notes. But the amazing Kreskin passed. He was, I think, 89 years old. Who is the amazing Kreskin? And he was, <clears throat> he was on the program a few years ago. So the amazing Kreskin, a.k.a. George Joseph Kresge, born in 1935, and he passed on December 10th. He was a magician, <clears throat> right? Amazing No, Kreskin. he was more... <clears throat> excuse me. What? There's going to be more coming up here. He was more of a, what they call a mentalist, a mind reader. Was he? Really? Well, he thoroughly admitted himself as an entertainer. He never said, oh, okay. this really exists. He never went into the he whole thing. He doing it for, yeah. yeah. And he figured out the, the way to try. And he also, I mean, he would really try and say, hey, you are welcome to try and see if I have anybody in the audience kind of oh, wow. listening Did in you, or, like or piece, yeah. devices or stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Or if I've done any research. No, no, no. So he really tried to show that A, is not real. But B, yeah, try and see how I'm doing it. So, and, and people couldn't, you know. He was presenting himself <clears throat> as a mentalist, not a psychic. Oh. So it wasn't about, like, predicting the future. Was like, he born in, in New York? He was actually born in Montclair, New Jersey. Oh, wow. So probably the fumes coming from the factories <laughs> helped his developmental, you know, oh, brain powers, chemistry. You know, like Superman. He went to Seton Hall University. Oh, a local, a local boy. And he got a degree in psychology, which I'm sure helped. Oh, yeah. And he actually worked as a clinical psychologist while developing his act. Which that's, I'll bet. That's you know, a problem. Well, maybe. From 1972 to 75, he had a TV series called The Amazing World of Kreskin, uh, produced in Canada. And then he appeared on the Steve Allen Show. He had, he had years earlier. And Mer Griffin. And it was Carson. Because he was just Kreskin at that point. Didn't Carson, Carson said, used to put it on his head? Well, Car Carson did that character of um, the psychic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the amazing, that, was it the great Carsoni, they called it? Maybe, yeah. yeah. But Carson dubbed Kreskin the amazing Kreskin, and that's what oh. stuck. Before that, it was just Kreskin, and Johnny Carson gave him his, his full moniker. Mm. So, yeah. And so what else? What else about him? Uh, da, da, da. How old was he, um, did you say? I think, he, let me see, he passed, as I said, this week at the age of 89. So not too shabby. And, you know, came to prominence. He was a letterman in the, in the Howard Stern show. He did 100 appearances on Regis and Kathy oh Lee. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, again, he didn't claim. He never claimed to have paranormal or claim clairvoyant. What's an example of something he did? Well, one of his, thank you, Wikipedia, one of his best known tricks was to find his own check for his current performance. If he didn't find it, you know, he'd have an audience member hide it. And if he oh, didn't wow. find it, he didn't get paid for that show. That's not good. And it, it worked almost every day. Every once in a while, he couldn't find the check. Every once in a while, he, you know, 
he had to that admit. That seems pretty uh, iffy. What do you mean? It acts thousands of times. You miss five or six. Yeah, but you want to get your check. Well, I know, but even even like a how could you a surgeon? How could you know where people hide their checks? I don't know. I don't know. Did anybody ever debunk his? Did he ever write a book about my secrets? Oh, he wrote dozens yeah. of books, but not giving away his secrets. Oh, they were you know they were um, so proprietary. Yeah. Let's see, he grew up in Caldwell, New Jersey, blah, blah, blah. How, well, he, he died from complication, oh, of dementia at an assisted living facility. And they must have gone downhill <clears throat> really quickly. pretty quickly because in 2022, <laughs> he was still doing oh, really? the Crest and Do. I mean, he wasn't performing, performing, but he was on. That's two years, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's only two years in his late 80s. Wow. I mean, well, no, I mean, I'm not even right. He stopped performing after being injured in a fall in early 2024. So he had a period of poor health in the weeks leading up to. So he probably went, how do you, how do you get dementia over half a year? Does that happen? No. Well, I wonder if he had some, maybe the fall, maybe had like a TBI. Yeah, yeah or like a, a brain. traumatic brain injury. It's usually like. Yeah. So yeah, no, he has literally like two dozen or a dozen more books over his career, uh, a fun guest in the neighborhood. If you go on davesgoneby.com, you can listen to our chat with Kreskin when oh, he was wow. on this program. And this was before we had video, so it was, it was a few years back. What year was it? 80s? I don't remember. Oh, no, no. 80s. We were, I wasn't even doing this show until 2022, mm -hmm. uh, 20, 2002. But I also have a personal thank you to Kreskin because he was one of the people mm -hmm. who came to see my a show that I was working on and I don't honestly remember whether it was Miracle of Long John's oh, really? or Shalom Dammit. Wow. Might have been Shalom Dammit. He and Joe Franklin. Oh my god. <laughs> Should tell you my, my did, did they come together? As like, a, like No, no well, I not like that Christian family there, no, but uh <laughs> no, but did they you know, separately. Oh, no. Nice. Cuz I don't know how I think it was shortly after I interviewed him maybe or something like that. I was he was on my Facebook feed, and he oh, came. That's lovely. He came to see my play, which you know, not a lot of famous or, or people that's who. That's wonderful. Did he predict anything? Did he predict what? He's was not a happen? he's not a psychic. Oh. He predicted that my show would not go to Broadway, and that I, I, my life would be a fucking failure. He did that. He did that, Kreskin. That's not true. <laughs> You're not a failure. You're a lovely man. Well, thank you there. So, but we do say our our. He was not a failure in any way. I mean, he created a career kind of like Uri Geller and some of these other folks, not like Tyler, Tyler Henry, who posits himself as a psychic, whatever. This is, this is just a guy who knew like, Oh, I can, I don't want to use the word trick, but I will. I can trick people into thinking certain things and make them come up with a number that I'm magically predicting for. You know, it's sort of like he knew the gig, he knew the rules, he knew the games. I'm sure Penn and Teller, could debunk him, but wouldn't want to because he never made any claims and he never went to the police and said, I can find, you know, the missing girl. And he, and he never went to some grieving widow and say, oh, I can talk to your husband. He didn't do that shit. He just was like, hmm, I think I know where your car keys are when you get home you know, or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. And that's, I don't mind that. That's, that's just fun. That's just playful fun. Anyway, speaking of playful fun, you're watching Dave's Gone By. Our 971st episode on this Saturday, December 14th, 2022. So we do have some stuff to do on the program. What else do we need to? Hey, oh, I know um, we've been up and down and thinking about, you know, whether we stay in Maryland, whether we don't stay in Maryland and moving. Do you want to, if, if we go back to New York, do you want to buy Bob Dylan's old apartment? Yeah. You know, you know right. It's more of a, I wouldn't say it's an apartment so much. It's like a five bedroom House on East Forty Ninth. Small for us, honey. You think? Sure. Yeah, might be. I mean, you know, with with all my my stuff and my potatoes, I don't know if a five bedroom in the middle of Forty Ninth Street, like Second Avenue, would really necessarily, um, you know, would would fit all of our needs. But it's true. Bob Dylan, this was in the um, the New York Post, lived in this. This area, it's where a lot of Broadway people live. Stephen Sondheim lived in that same general vicinity where he didn't have just an apartment. 
No. It was an apartment the size of a gorgeous house with a yard. Tell me where. Everything. East 49th and like I second. I live on the east side. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't live in the no. place that Bob Dylan lived from like the late 70s the through the side, 80s no. in New York. I well, lived in Gramercy Park and I lived in the, on the east 20s. I don't like the east side. All right. All right. Well, it, it it's going. I'm almost surprised that it's how, how much do you think it's going for? Two billion. No, 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 no. Seventeen billion. No, it's oh. only only. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit under the asking price, eight million. That's now you're bought, not buying it directly from Bob Dylan because he's been out of there for uh, well over like two decades, three decades. Well, there, then? Oh, it's just you know it's traded hangs and then then these real estate groups have it, and they all for money. Oh, I yeah. get it. But also, one of the things that it said in the article is that they put in finally an elevator. Like when people, I can just see all these incredibly rich people back in the '60s. Ruth Gordon lived there, you know, the '60s, the '70s, the '80s. Um, rich, famous, ha raising families, having kids, but they still have to schlep up a New York walk up. Who's going to take the carriage upstairs? Yeah, well, the, the, the maid. <laughs> <laughs> And then the underpaid foreign maid who, who, yeah. who has to be worried about being shipped out next year. Um, but I guess it's kind of funny <clears throat> that, that to, to live in New York, even the ultra famous and wealthy who can be protected from everything, live in this little enclave, basically have the suburbs yeah. right in the heart of Manhattan or, or east side of Manhattan. And yet it's sort of like, ah, oh, shit, I'm <laughs> three flights up. Three flights down. Three flights down. Uh, wait, did you did you leave something in the limousine? Oh, I forgot the milk. Three flights down. Three flights up. Yeah. So they put it in the elevator. That's, uh, they probably had a dumb waiter in it. I I don't even. Probably. No. Yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, it's a lovely thing with open. When Bob look for Bob Dylan's house in New York. Bob Dylan's house or apartment in New York. It's a hideout. No, only 7.25 million. Oh, 7. It's not. It's barely over 7 million. It's two, uh, two, four, two, four, two. Yeah. Which, you know, you can laugh, I can laugh, and anybody who doesn't make <laughs> real money in this world can go, yeah, sure, okay, play money, monopoly money, whatever. But there are houses, you know, and, and estates and things in Colorado that are 14 mil. Um, and, and you get land and you get whatever. But uh, comparatively, Considering the historical significance that Bob Dylan lived in this thing post Big Pink, you know, kind of when he came back to New York, was doing blood on the tracks. It only gives one photo. And and desire in the nineteen and, and stuff in the nineteen eighties and and Bob Dylan's Garson Canyon, I think, lived there with um, yeah. Does it not show? I mean, it's going to be on the market. We, we could put in a bid. We could do a low bid. It was like quarter of a mil. We we can probably scrounge that up if we sell this house. Quarter of a million dollars. We'll, we'll put it down, down payment, maybe another 50 thou, uh, stretched out over 30 years. Just make it, and, and we could be living uh, right back in Manhattan in, in high style. People, people ask me if I want or, or want to live back in New York. And I'd be like, anybody can live You're New York. It's West Village history. That might be oh, that too. That was before. That was, that was yeah. 60s. Um, but, you know, if, if you are Woody Allen, if you are a famous, famous, rich person, you, I, I can see living in New York over anywhere else in the whole planet because you're not really living in New York except the walk-ups. <laughs> uh, you're, you're, you're not. You're not. You, you're experiencing New York as a tourist every single day of your life and then coming back to splendor. But to be real New York, and I have lived in Manhattan, and I have commuted to Manhattan, it's a whole, whole other kettle of fish. So to live like this in Manhattan with an elevator, with four or maybe five bedrooms, are you seeing it? Does it have it? I'm looking at Dylan's wives to try to figure out. Oh, you see, yeah, well, that's his last one, the, the, the African-American lady, the one who was supposedly a secret. Um... And the one who, you know, cursed her name, brought him into gospel, I'm sure, uh, for, and, 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 and converted him for a few years, perhaps still. There's so many women. Well, yeah. Well, he was Bob Dylan. What? You're not, what is the point of being Bob Dylan if you can't get pussy? This is, you know, it's okay. Yeah, the fame thing is wonderful. The money's fantastic, of course. 
He didn't want people worshiping him. He didn't want people following leaders. Uh, or, or he did want them watching the parking meters because he lived in New York for a period of time. But no, you do this to get chicks. You want trim. And he got it. All the Rolling Stones, all the Led Zeppelin people, Bowie. This, this is what they do. What they I do. It because they like music. Of course they like music and they leave music and they love music, but they learn very quickly that if you make music and you wait around after the show, you're going to get a Hummer <laughs> or more. You're also going to get you know, fabulous STDs back in the day, but, uh, but we won't discuss that. Um, so, so there. Then you also get to live in Manhattan and he Los Angeles and he's dope. with Mavis Staples. I know. I know. Well, that was when he was a little, a little sprout of a, a singer-songwriter thing. But yeah, there was Sarah, of course, Sarah Lowndes, mm -hmm. and then, um, well, and, and we forget, he wasn't married to Suze. Suze was just his girlfriend. Um, and then Sarah was his wife, and then he married the African-American gospel woman. I don't know what his love life or sex life has been since then, like the last 10, 15 years. He still goes on the road. There's still a never-ending tour. He gets on the bus. I'm guessing... He is provided for. I'm guessing his needs, you know, on some basic level, whether boring, roadies. Boring. Listen, what is boring about this? It's the least boring thing in the world. You, a rock star having a do groupie. Think, do you think Bob Dylan reads Mr. Hines' book? No. Uh, I'm sure Bob Dylan needs ketchup. I'm sure back in the day when he was living off other, you know, leftovers on other people's plates at the McDougal Street Cafe or the Cornelia Street Cafe. He probably swiped a few French fries into other people's ketchup. I wouldn't be shocked. I would too. When, when did we just see the free food thing? Where did we just see that? What are you talking about, Phil? Um, that even if you're well off, even if... It, oh, oh, we were watching um, Queer Eye, the new... Um, iteration, the, the new season of Queer Eye. And there's this guy who's very well known in Las Vegas, this, this schlubby guy who figured out, speaking of magicians and all that, there's, there's this dragon guy in Vegas who is a really well known and acclaimed magician out there. Like he does him. five shows a week, but he said, you know what? Yeah, I mean, and he lives in this beautiful Vegas compound and he's rich and he's well off and he's got this beautiful wife and so on and so forth. But he's like, you know, even at this point, I will, I'm not going to turn down a free meal. If I can get free food, I'm because you never forget when you're a performer, the, and Joan Rivers felt like this too, the phone can always stop ringing. Oh, yeah. really? I mean, I interview, I, she literally told that to me. I, I interviewed her for Long Island Woman. And she's like, you live in constant fear of the phone not ringing. But the phone's ringing. You know what that means? What is it? It means it's time to... Delve into. Oh, phone. not the AI word. Delve is the one word that AI uses all the time. Oh, oh, does it? Wow. Well, I don't know why they think it's a word yeah, done by know. computers. So we will explore the phone calls that come into the Northern Colorado Police Dispatch of people saying, "Oh my God, there's there's things happening What's in my neighborhood." What's the dispatch? Um. I'm not sure. Is well, wait, like, actually it won't be dispatch. It's kind of incoming, isn't it? I don't know. A firehouse will have a dispatcher. A, a well, no, please. We'll have, who's, who's, uh, hmm? What's that, Joanne Dave. Jo well, Johanna Day. Well, Johanna Day is our guest in the neighborhood. She's coming up in a little bit, talking oh, to the great oh, Rabbi Saul Solomon. Will she bring ketchup? I... Maybe. I mean, she's acting in an off-Broadway show. Did you buy that open and door closing thing? We got that sound with Grant. Can we hear it? I haven't, I haven't opened it yet. It might need batteries, honey. Oh, oh. Yeah. I, we, we literally had to buy like a two dozen AAA batteries this week and, and order them online just because we use so many AAA just to batteries show. For, for this, for this stuff. Um, and I don't know if I can okay. open it. This, this, okay. Yeah. I think you might need batteries. Might need some nail. Well, batteries and a nail. Mm -hmm. Oh well. All right. So we'll use it next week. <laughs> we we use all these different sound machines and things, and they last a while. But when they start to go, they need like little. A lot of times, these little horrible NiCad batteries that not even good triple or double A batteries. 
but at least we're going to show now. Ah, yeah. I'll get it. worry about it next time. I'll get it. Well, I want to do Greeley times. So these are real calls that come into the Greeley and uh, Evans and Northern Colorado police dispatch from people who are worried about stuff going on in their neighborhood. We take the best ones it's got, from. Oh, well, maybe it's got batteries and it's got a pull thing. Oh, don't try it. Maybe it works right out of the box. In the Greeley Tribune, they call it cop log, but we. I pulled the battery switch, so yeah. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Let's see if it works. You got to pull it down. I can't. With my bad finger. All right. Hold on. Ah. Okay. Let's get this out. Let's get this out. As, as a booklet. All right. And. Ready? So what it is. Take out the plastic. Take the whole thing out? Yeah, that's, that, that's the packaging. All right, here we go. All right, hold, let's do another one. Oh, it's stuck on uh, more done. tape. Oh, it's got more tape. Yeah. I'm sorry, honey. We're having a technical difficulty. So, it sounds like a shotgun. All right, so it's this clever idea. How is that a door sound? Okay, so it's supposed to make the noise of a slamming door, right? Okay, so here it is. Here's the door. Okay, now here's the backside of the door. Kind of like a stage door that you would yeah, see. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then you just go. Like a metal door. Oh, yeah, in, in an echoey. Yeah, like a metal door. I think I'll stick with the trombone on this one, but it's not bad. Can I open Oh, I can open it from this side. Watch. Oh, let's see. Wow! Whoa! Do it fast. They really should do like, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, uh, hey, who, who's that guy? That Italian-looking guy who's going up to the guy by the Hilton? What the? Oh. <laughs> Man. Ah. Uh, all right, all right. Oh, oh, it's time for Greeley. Okay, what do you play? Okay. Times. Chickens. <laughs> Chickens! Chickens! I got them all! With my left hand! Wow! Wow, there's not many things I do with my left Well, anyway. So, let's... Greeley Times, ladies and gentlemen, which are... Can I just say something, David? You may. You know who saved me when I cut my finger? I had the cabinet open and Mel was watching. Mel saved me. Yeah, all right. What... My wife is talking about. Do you want to show? You have? Do you have a bandaid on? No, I don't. It's better, but I don't want to show. Oh, oh! Two days ago, uh, and of course it was when I wasn't home. Sometimes I'm lucky that way. So, so <laughs> she she is um, painting her her nails with nails. No, 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 I was getting nail polish out of the cabinet and it dropped on the floor. Oh, this was even before you. Oh, oh, oh! So I don't know why the fuck they make nail polish in glass bottles. It's not supposed to last so long that it's going to corrode plastic. Just put it in plastic, but no. They make it in glass. It falls. It shatters on the bathroom tile. And so now you've got red nail polish everywhere on the yeah, tiles of the bathroom bad. floor. And my wife is like, oh, I've got, and she's got to go clean it up because you don't want it permanently staining like a white bathroom tile. Mm -hmm. So she's at it, she's at it, she's at it. And she's cleaning up. It looks great, but there's still more like red. Mm -hmm. So she's cleaning and she goes, it's like, there's still more red. And she realizes it's the, blood. the red is not nail polish. The red is blood leaking from her knuckle because she cut her knuckle, like getting the glass bits with the nail polish. And then I think, of course, because it's a knuckle and you're constantly moving it, oh. it doesn't have time to See sort you. of set and compress and stop. So then she finally realizes, oh, shoot, you know, I've cut, there's a little flap of skin. She puts Neosporin. Did you put First peroxide? Thing, peroxide yeah. Oh, did I? That must have felt really good. Over the toilet, I was like, because I wanted to stop bleeding. I didn't yeah. care. And then, but you did. Thank God it was not a. a I, I yeah. took toweling paper and I, I, um, it's not suture. Mom and I had the discussion. I stabilized it by uh, wrapping it with my pinky so it couldn't move. So it, because the mm. knuckle couldn't move, I stabilized the knuckle because every time you bend it, it would bleed. Oh, so you put these two yeah, together yeah. and yeah, and wrap them together. And so. <laughs> Because I got a call in the car while I'm, I'm trying to drive home from giving like a, a final or pre watching presentations yeah. and stuff. And he's like, uh, are you close to home? I'm like, why? It's like, I, I cut myself. There's blood on the ceiling. I'm, no, she, she didn't I didn't say, say on the ceiling. That's yeah. not artery. <laughs>
Uh, but, you know, thank goodness, thank goodness it was not. So, so wait, how do we get on this with your, your finger? I wanted to tell you something. Oh, because you were saying, like, I don't know. But anyway, thank God her finger is fine. You know, her hand, I saw it yesterday, we put new band-aid on it. It's healing beautifully. Oh, and speaking of healing, even though he has not been a guest on our program, let me give a shout out to our neighbor across the street that we've talked about a bit because mm -hmm. we we trade garbages together and stuff well collecting the, the empty garbage bins and bringing them back he's lovely he's an ideal neighbor if you think what about a, you think about a neighbor he's just he's a lovely human so so greg uh has or had oh, hopefully had of snow fierce winds slam new york my mom said it was so windy yet the other day it was really yeah. bad but anyway get well our our neighbor had a hernia which he had repaired, I'm presuming, yesterday. Mm -hmm. So today we, we might walk over and, and uh, bring him something. Yeah. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the household is vegan, so we can't just bring him the natural chicken soup or anything oh, like that. But... Vegan chocolates. I'm yeah, sure they have vegan chicken soup, like a... Make of what? I don't know. I can't eat all that stuff. I mean, we bring him vegetable soup you know, from vegetarian tomatoes or something. But, yeah, um, um, anyway, we hope that he is... Um, He's a lovely man. Doing fine. Because first day after surgery is rough. Second day after surgery is brutal. When and that will be tomorrow. To, when he has to uh, do bodily functions, it's going to be the option. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, we, I warned him. But if he takes the, you have to take the Velox. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, you, you know, you're concerned about him getting constipated and not being able to go. I'm warning him that when he does go, it's going to be horrible. It's the worst thing because you have to sit, push. Try and wipe. Why does it it's just, horrendous. Why does you have to wait till it comes out naturally. Why do you just have Metamucil? Or not, like eat fiber, eat a bunch of beans. Yeah, it, it's Taco, again, it's not about eat yeah. Taco Bell. Oh, that that would yeah, but the wiping, the physical act you of never torsion. Oh, I. Oh yeah. Who did it? Not the time. first, not the second, third, or fourth day. After that, I had to, and Everybody it wasn't a pleasure. Wiped. Yeah. Everybody wipes your little tissue. Yeah. No, my when I had my hernia, and mine was rough. Mine was. Um, emergency Strangulated. almost. Strangulated. Yeah. Strangulated. So, yeah. I'll show you a picture. So when I pooped, and thank goodness I did poop, uh, but... Yeah, but you don't know if he had you can't... strangulated hernia. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Strangle very much, ladies and gentlemen. This is your photo. <laughs> <laughs> That's my height, too. Uh -huh. uh, oh, no, he got bigger. He's, he's just elongated. He yes, was just yeah. a tiny little thing. It's so weird. He looks... He looks Trim and nice here, and now he looks all squat. Yeah, but see, that's the little little bump on the on the right. Yeah. That thing sticking in the intestinal walls, the hernia. See. And that that thing right there, that, yeah, that little, little football thing. bean like nugget. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, that's I had that. Yeah, but if you're not strangulated, it's better because you have they have to pull it in the wall. Yeah. If you just have the hole, you know. He might heal. You know, I remember there was a friend of mine who was a, a press agent years ago, and she had a kid. And she, you know, so apparently pregnant women get hernias. This, this is a thing that happens. And she was fine in like a couple of days. I'm like, wait, how? How? I was, I was in agony for two weeks and still recuperating the third week. And I had to take you at that time. You were still working and play, you know, wherever. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I had to take you. So I would take you on the subway and go all the way home and then go to school. Oh yeah, but yeah, just just so I can manage the subway. Because cause... I know any on the like the railroad, you were afraid of getting like touched. You're yeah. anywhere. Well, and getting so, up, and, you, and yeah. you're not good at navigating crowds, so I'd have to get you to the office. Right. Well, New York, that's the one thing. If you have a hernia, New York is not a fun place to be. No. You don't want to be standing on like you know either Fourth, well, well forget Eighth and Ninth Avenue Anywhere. or Seventh Avenue, but even Madison Avenue. Anywhere, yeah. yeah. And I mean, around rush hour when like you have to get to work. When I had my hand surgery. Remember, and this was like oh yeah. yeah, I still have it. Right? There's the scar. And so the guy's like, just hold your arm up, and he like take my hand up and stuff to heal. And you know, I go on the rail. I think I was with mom, and we went on the railroad. Everybody's like touching my hand. Nobody ever touches you. And when you can't have it, people were like, I mean, I was like, what's true. wrong? It's like, so true. It's like just the one time when you can't uh, do it. I was like, well, also the thing that I hope Greg doesn't find out. During surgery, is is that old line? Neil Simon even named a play after it. Only when I laugh, which is you know, doesn't oh, hurt. Yeah, Only when yeah. I laugh, and he will find out that laughter is one of the worst moments of your life after you've had oh, abdominal surgery. 
I remember you called, I felt bad, you called uh, Ozuru, because I was like, we have to keep you occupied, because you were, you know, you were going stir crazy. Yeah, and then, that was fine, actually. No, you, you, were, you were like, really not happy. One day, one day I woke up, and you were completely you're on the floor, on your back, still, not moving, and you're straight as like a bean, and I said, David, what's wrong? And you're like, I rolled out of bed, and I couldn't get up, and I just stayed here. So the whole night you were lying on the flame? Lying? No, it was just for an hour or two. Oh, lying. Was I was lying on the floor, yeah. Then, no, I, I think I went up to get to the bathroom and realized uh, that was not going to happen. And then I couldn't get back up and get into the bed. But was that my hernia or was that when I had my that bad was back? Your hernia. That was your hernia. Oh, yeah. And then, and then <laughs> yeah. I decided uh, you call your friend Ozer because I thought, you know, you might you know reminisce. and You love him. He's your oldest friend, you know. And then, then I hear you laughing and screaming. You're like, ah, 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 ah. And well, then, because, yeah, because you laugh and then it moves something and then suddenly you're in terrible pain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but and the thing you, you find out that is so cruel is that you start w just watching television to relax, right? Uh, and, and you flip through things that normally you would barely even smile at. And suddenly everything is the funniest thing in the world. Forget you're watching something like Family Guy, oh, yeah, which yeah. would make me explode. You, but even you told me yeah. that um, the South Park movie gave you oh, the No, you you you, you, you say that. that but, you, you said that. You were laughing so much. But like anything, any TV commercial, which you would normally watch, like uh, suddenly I would find something hysterical in it, and I would be like. <laughs> No. That was literally what would happen. We couldn't even look at each other at points, and then <laughs> yeah. I would. I then I and then and then you gave the phone like you can't talk, and, and then Oz was like, "Is something really wrong with him? Is he okay?" You thought you were like really sick, and then when G came to see you and he cooked for you, you were sick. I guess like, well, I was yeah. still yeah. yeah yeah. And so G was like, "Is he okay?" I was like, "Yeah, it's fine." It's fine. Well, I was pale. It was the first yeah, week yeah. after surgery, and it was rough. It was, it was supposed to be, you know, oh, it's laparoscopic, it'll heal quickly, we got in there, we got in there on time, blah, blah, blah. No, but it, they also did searching on the other side, too. They did a little oh, yeah. looking for the other time, yes. Yeah, I was, I was in distress before and after. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I warned our next-door neighbor, like, yeah, yeah. it isn't like a 72-hour, again, you're fine. Yeah, but thing. everybody's different, David. You yeah, but he's also know. much older. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, he might have had surgeries before, like... Sometimes if people had stuff before, they're like, oh, you know, it's not as scary. Oh, yeah, fair enough. True. You know, like you might know the know the drill, you know. Mm. Well, they're not, yeah, hopefully they're not using a no, drill. No, they know the recovery. Like, you don't know the recovery process, too. The only thing is, is, is it's been 20, uh, yeah, so maybe five years. Maybe Who process. knows what they're doing now? Now Who? they do it with a little drone and you know, via AI. Well, yeah. They put a little drone in your in your. They should just go through the mouth. Oh, the tushy. Oh, why can't they? I don't know. I mean, honestly, why can't they just go up the ass, because there's a hole there anyway, and just... Pull it back in. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, literally. Why can't they do it? You know the thing like they do with dents in a car that they suck out the dent? They could push it back. Exactly. I'm, why can't they? I don't they? know. I don't know. You know, all, everybody's working on COVID. People are working on AIDS, sickle yeah, cell yeah. anemia. No. How about just like... Ways to, to <laughs> do yeah. non completely non-invasive hernia uh, and, and maybe removing of gallbladders and appendices. Yeah. Just like we can go in there, we can we, through the ear. We can we can pop in through the ear or down I the nostril. Like on Star Trek, they didn't even have to cut you open. Did they really? They yeah. just used like a stylist and they went like that. Yeah, yeah. and maybe in a hundred years. Yeah, that's true. For certain things, in a hundred years they will. You know? I mean, look, look what they're doing with the eyeballs now. I understand they're clogging the did a laser. They do the eye oh, for that's the. True, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I guess you know you're not a doctor, honey. Uh oh. No, 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 no. Oh, 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 oh! We have phone calls. <clears throat> Getting back to Greeley times. These are real. These are actual people calling Why in. Why don't you use one of these because they're not going to stick no more. They have to have a new oh. function. Here, I'll do the sloth phone. Here's, here's our, here's a sloth. So our first call. Comes from a fast food, all right, hold on. From a fast food restaurant on Center Place Drive who said a man outside was dancing on the patio. All right. What's wrong I'm, with that? Well, I'm, just... I'm wondering if it was Chipotle and he was actually shaking diarrhea out of his trousers. <laughs> Why can't you dance on the patio? It would freak the customers out a little yeah, bit. But it, well, you love it if you went into like a fast food place and there was someone like just you know 
living their best life, doing a, doing some kind of dance on the patio. I think it'd be very festive. Yeah. You know what's weird? It would be adorable if it was two people together. It was like a couple dancing. Maybe he, but one person is fucked up and weird. Maybe he hallucinated. <laughs> Maybe. No, but that's that's the weird part. Two people would be like, "Oh, how cool, how fun!" It must be a flash mob thing. Uh, and then, and then, if it's one person, I'd like to see one man doing flash dance. You know, like the flash uh, dance dance. That'd I, be great. It, He's dancing for the fight of his life. I would like to see Mel with this guy. Oh, and that's why you brought it up because you saw the picture of Melvin G. Mintz, yes. our friend of the neighborhood. He's getting tanner and tanner. He, well, he's got all these rays coming from the... Yeah, and look at the uh, other guy, the bald man. Oh, yes, we love him, too. Yeah. And, of course, and of course, we, we keep, for no good reason, uh, the Lubavitcher Rebbe is there, as well as Ketchup. Well, the Lubavitcher Rebbe is there for Rabbi Saul. Ketchup is there because, of course... Not boring. The H.J. Hines Not Boring book. Mm, which we're read. Ketchup packets mm. to get you through. Oh, oh, I have one in my, on my desk, but, but we'll get that later. Oh. But right now we got oh we got more calls coming in from oh oh no, oh oh shoot I can't hold on no, watch your back don't no, don't no, cool okay well I, I'll get this I'll have this one in the ready it's our spare phone okay. um a caller at the Greeley Mall oh. said her daughter's teacher called saying that her daughter was making inappropriate gestures the caller asked the teacher several times <laughs> to show her what the gesture was how could she do it on the phone. Oh, maybe with a video or WhatsApp. Well, um, yeah. The call, uh, uh, then when, the, I guess maybe she met the teacher. Yeah, yeah. And this was the person calling the cops about that. Then when the teacher made the gesture, the caller got extremely upset saying the teacher should not have done that in front of her daughter. <laughs> oh, my God. And this is why public education is where it is right now, my friends. Fantastic. Just fantastic. Oh, all right. Oh, this phone, this phone could use a little polishing. I'm glad I have another phone handy. Oh, 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 we have a piggy call. Oh, don't do Wrong. that. Better not do that right in the ear. <laughs> Where are you? Oh, no, David, don't. It's going to make you know here. A caller. Well, yeah. this caller. Here. Oh, another slot phone. All right, this, this one. Yeah, could you call back? Oh. Oh, there. Oh, it's a much clearer connection this time. Oh, this is a caller on Alpine Avenue. Oh, wow. Wanted to file a complaint because he had video footage of a neighbor's dog pooping in his yard. Wow. Hey, look, you know, the neighbor, you know, the Kardashians make sex tapes. Yeah, yeah. Other people have other fetishes. Well, you know, Ring offers a whole range of services. The dog pooping channel is a... Yeah. Do you call the cops if you have a dog poop problem? No. 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 Not at all. No. No, you don't. You just, uh, ow, ow. Is it ow. stuck? Hey, my old phlegm. Okay, there we go. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll get this in the stereo phone. Oh, who is it? Here we are. Uh, where are you? Oh, unknown location. Oh, boy. Uh oh. How do they say, David? I know we discuss this every yeah. week, but. Yeah, yeah. They have to know where people call from. Well, no, they have a, probably a number gonna, that pops up. I'm going to say, do the, can the police find out where you're calling from? Quickly, yeah. If you call the police, will they know instantly where you're calling from and your name and number? It says yes. When you call the police department, they use enhanced caller ID sure. to determine the caller's name, address, and other inf information. It is true whether you call from a home, your mobile phone, or business, blocking your number won't work. Yeah. It says when you call them, they can triangulate access to your phone number and the point you're calling, meaning they know where you're calling from even if you block it. Yeah. So they know. Yeah, we talked about this last time. Like in the yeah. old days, it's like, keep them on the phone for a minute. They the kidnapper. They, uh, they know where. So, yeah. so it's, a, it's an undisclosed location. Maybe that's closer. Yeah. 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 Or, the, or the, maybe sometimes the dispatch doesn't take it down or doesn't have time to whatever. Because, I don't know. Again, if it's, it's so not, minor, you're not going to... It's gonna, not an emergency. Yeah. If it's not a fire or something like that. Yeah. If there's... Like, the dog's pooping on the... You know, I don't need to know where you live. Yeah, I don't need to... I don't <laughs> want to know where you live. Uh, but in this particular case, the caller said that two drunk women in a Chrysler 
kept driving by Two her house. In a this is one of those that's made by the wording. Is, in a, not just in a car, in a that, Chrysler. Is that by Thelma, like Thelma and Louise? Before we go over the edge, let's go look at Edith. Mm. They're, they're low rent. You know, if they were, Thelma, they have a Tesla or something. Well, this yeah. is a Chrysler. I they kept it. driving by her house and honking at her. I don't know. Was she I, inside or outside? That's a good question. Um, maybe she was on the porch or something. Uh oh. Oh, oh, oh. Chicken phone. Chicken phone. Chicken phone. We have another caller to, um, or from, yeah. Northern Colorado. This is, oh, I'm sorry. This is calling from a crisis center uh -oh. on 12th Street. <laughs> Said that a man had called 65 times Jeepers. in the past 20 minutes. How can you do that? How can you call? I guess you can. Well, every 30 seconds you can probably, oh, yeah. yeah. But the, or three times, yeah. Something yeah. like that. The man was not suicidal. But he was calling employees inappropriate names. Okay. Yeah. But I remember back in the remember rotary phones, mm -hmm. and you had to call in like a radio station to win a prize, yeah, yeah. and you'd be like nine, oh, fucking nine, yeah. six, oh two, two is always good. Yeah. two, three, um, eight, yeah. Yeah. and then you you get a busy signal, you hang up because you try you know the there first no ten callers. There was no redial, yeah. yeah. Oh, horrible. But this guy now he can just go like ah, asshole. Cocksucker! You know, just, just keep doing it. Oh, another, another call. Another call. Take your oh, phone. No, 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 Dave. That's going to death uh, you. Don't do that. Wait, if I, you know, if I hold this asshole, no, no, it doesn't... No, no, don't, don't, don't. Trust okay, me. It's going to hurt yourself. All right, I'll do slot phone. Um, a man, a caller, sorry, at a nightclub on East 18th Street. Oh, what would be nightclub music? I know. Ouch. 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 So this caller at the nightclub reported a fight. Ooh. The police came, but those at fault were hiding in the bathroom. Uh, police aren't allowed to go in the bathroom. Yeah, I didn't think, okay, you can, what do you but they were hiding in the bathroom? I guess if they're making doo-doo or pee-pee in the stall, they can't go get them. Maybe they can't. They can, oh, they can go in uh, and wait. <laughs> what happens if the person never leaves the stall? Well, the police have the right at that point to for go in the stall. Yeah, wouldn't that be trespassing or whatever they call it? I'm or ask can the police take someone out of a bathroom stall? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, involuntarily, you know. Can the police remove somebody from a bathroom stall inside a bathroom? Yes. Thank you, AI. <laughs> yeah, but they have to have a warrant or suspect a crime. Mm. It has to be like. Hmm. Um, it says, or danger to somebody, but they need to be sensitive when somebody's in the pod. Well, I mean, well yeah, well, yeah, but I guess if they, they need a warrant unless they suspect a crime, but they've just started a fight, I don't know, a fight is not yeah, really a crime. they don't really know. Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. By the way, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Time, here in the neighborhood. You're watching the 971st episode of The Day Has Gone By, Facebook, Yo, Podcast, Yo, Program, Yo of the stream with me, Dave Lefkowitz, my wonderful and adorable wife. We have Sloths with us. We have Potato with us. We have Pooey with us too. And we will have Rabbi Saul Solomon interviewing Johanna Day in just a little bit. But we're in the middle of Greeley Times and the phone is ringing off the hook. Poo phone. Oh, here we go. A caller on 9th Street said that a man on a bicycle rode by and spit on his truck. Caller was wondering if there's anything the police could do. Car wash? Community car wash. Okay, yeah, I'm wondering, I am wondering if maybe my idea from my old phlegm yes. has taken off. That people have been influenced by my segment Especially of my old phlegm. people running bicycles. Yeah, they go, they hock up a loogie. And it's like, this is what it looks like on a truck. It's a masterpiece of art. I don't know if mine was a masterpiece of art. Mine was kind of minimalist a bit. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I, the sneeze call. A caller. A caller. At a convenience store. on third. Well, that's very convenient. On 13th Street said a friend took all of her things, so she took her friend's phone. She said that she would give back the phone if she got her things. Fair? Fair is fair, right? You know, so, um... Yeah, I don't... You gotta, like, that stuff's gotta be worked out by, like, you know, friends. I mean, that's... 
Yeah, that's tit for tat. And I do like tits. So, oh, hold on. No, 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 take phone. I'll get the Tago phone. Hello? Hello? Who is it? Oh, they hung up. Oh, I'm sorry, Potato. Maybe they'll call back. Oh, okay, I'll get this. Yeah, yeah, hey. Hey, hey. A call, oh, call her on, se or on 7th Avenue. Yeah? Physically on 7th Avenue. Saw a car driving around the block for the past half hour and honking the horn. The caller described the situation as, quote, General Mischief. Who was, by the way, one of the better generals uh, in World War One? Kind of forgotten nowadays, but there. I think it's about time for an elsewhere. This is where we go elsewhere in the world, elsewhere in a universe of, away from northern Colorado for a weird and ridiculous funny story that we share with you as part of Greeley Times. So here is our elsewhere for the week. We go all the way to India. From the Shepherd Express News of the World is, is who published this real true story. Folks, have you ever really loved a car? I mean, we loved our, our Subaru. Yeah, we, we, we liked our Subaru. And we like our current Subaru too. Yeah. Uh, the Polara family of pa Padarshinga village yeah. in India really loved their 18 year old Suzuki Wagon R. Mm. It was their lucky car. So when the hatchback burned, a Suzuki wagon R. yeah. Oh, can you pull up a, a Suzuki yeah, wagon R? Yeah. Show me a picture of a Suzuki wagon R. I mean, this would be from the early twenties or two thousand tens or Zips. Sorry. Oh, it's a big thing. Yeah. Oh, it's like a real family. They probably had a lot of vacations and adventures in it. So yeah, they love. This is not the Suzuki. This is a yeah, this Suzuki is like a wagon stop, R. Probably. They loved it. So when their hatchback burned its last gallon of gas, they gave it a special send off, a lavish burial ceremony attended by more than fifteen hundred guests. Wow, that car must have done a lot of good stuff. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> check this out. The Polaris <laughs> had a fifteen foot deep hole dug in their property, and then as music played, they covered the car with flowers, decorated it with garlands, and lowered the car into this giant backyard hole. The ceremony featured several rituals, and it cost nearly $5,000. But Sanjay Polara told the press, quote, this car was more than just a vehicle. It was part of our journey towards success, unquote. And he plans to plant a tree Aww. over the grave as I a marker. I everyone would do that. That's Isn't that lovely. lovely? Although all the car's chemicals are is leaching into the soil. Like yeah. Well, 50, it's like, do you really need, is a car bigger than a human that you need something more than six foot deep? A car? Yeah. yeah a car is way bigger. It's two tons of metal. No, heavier, yeah. longer, yeah. but do you really need? Uh, maybe you do. Wow. Wow. I can understand 15 foot wide. Only the best for their Suzuki. I know. I wonder if their, their current Suzuki is feeling like, you know, they're not going to do this for me. Oh, I know. I'm just like the second one. Me, I'm, they're going to give me away. They're, they're just going to put me in the scrap heap. They're going to trade me in. Trade me in for a, a Honda. So the, their current Suzuki, like, h hires goons to dig up the, the grave Aww. and scatter the body parts elsewhere, Aww. desecrates it, like, uh, pisses oil on the headstone. Maybe they don't have another Suzuki. What's the oh, maybe they got some. I don't know if they still make it even. Uh, oh boy. Po Polara. The name, that's the name of the family. Polara. P O L A R A. I wonder, it's true. I wonder what they're driving now. Probably have a Partridge Polara family bus. Polara family story about burying their Suzuki car. Oh my God. <laughs> Do they have pictures of the burial? I didn't have that. That I didn't see. Yeah. I can, I can share some of them. Thank you. So there's the card bedecked and be strewn with garlands. You can see that, I guess, on the yeah. And there's, their Suzuki is white, like the one. And there's there's the crane. It's rather hard to see. Digging or, or, or getting this 15 foot hole ready. 
<laughs> wow. Maruti Suzuki wagon owner. Yeah. What if, if, if there would be a Jewish custom for the same thing? Like if there's a, a prayer, like a, a Chrysler Kaddish or something like that. Um, yes, Kadal, yes, Kadash. Shmei Suzuki, no, it does, doesn't really kind of work. You know. And then instead of lighting a candle for yard site, what would Jews do? You they, can't they, because they, there's gasoline. Yeah, no, right, that would be the, the most dangerous thing. You would have to, to remember another, the car. Here's another photo. You would, just, you would just have windshield wipers going in your house like for 24 hours yes. <laughs> a couple of times a year. Oh, 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 oh. You must have a lot of friends. I and a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Friends and money, yeah. But then again, it's a, the ceremony is more about the people than the vehicle itself. So these 1,500 okay, people had a, had a moment, you know? It's like, it's theater, in a, in a manner of speaking. So it, on some level, it's, for me, it's $5,000 well spent. Yeah. They created a family, friend, memorable event. Okay. And for five grand, I think that's pretty, uh, pretty fair. Uh, why not? Are you gonna cover me with garlands when I die, hon? I don't know. I'll be dead before you. So. Yeah, yeah, I'll be dead before me. I'm wondering if you should smear me with excrement. No. I mean, I, I would, it would help me decay quick. Maybe it wouldn't. Well, it would attract more flies, which would lay maggots in me, and then eat me faster. I don't know. I, I have to think about it. I have to think about you know. Have what, you ever seen the movie The Sicilian? No, is that a Scorsese one? I think they're saying it is. Oh, are you, is it coming up now because of Luigi or what? I don't know why. Anyway, anyway, um, let's get back to Greeley times. These are phone calls that come into the Greeley Well County Police Department in Northern Colorado. The funniest ones go into the Greeley Tribune newspaper and the funniest of the funniest we share with you every week here on Greeley Times on Dave's Gone By. So we have another call coming in from, oh, the door phone. This actually is almost shaped like a phone. It's like, or would it be more like, no, it, it would be that. Like, hello, hello. A caller at an another unknown address. But they have a door. A caller at an unknown address on H Street Road says he did not feel like going to school that day and I wanted to know why he had to, to go. So, I mean, in this case, uh, you, you tell a kid, here's 911, but you have to tell a kid, here's why you don't dial. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's do another. Let's do another. Um, I think like, the police are going to give you an absence note. No, no, the police will, is going to tell you, son, you have to. I wonder what they would tell a kid of why. Because you have to learn things so you can grow up and get like a day job and work your ass off as a police officer and put your life on the line and then also deal with idiots like you. <laughs> Maybe, you know what, don't go to school. Kill yourself now. Spare yourself the next 70 years. Oh, another phone call. A caller on 5th Street said that earlier in the day, a man was leaning against her trash cans, so she gave him water and bread. Steak. After that, the man kept hanging around her driveway and walking up and down the block. So He probably wants a dessert. Yeah. I just say, never feed Oscar the Grouch. Oh, yeah. You know, he, you know, he's in the trash can. Let him get what he gets and let yeah. him go away. But I think it is kind of fun. It's so biblical. Like, she didn't give him a donut or a leftover sandwich. Mm -hmm. She gave him bread and water. That's like a free give a prisoner. Yeah. And he still came back. Maybe it was good. Maybe it was a boule. Could be. <laughs> she gave him Fiji water and a boule. <laughs> <laughs> a spelt boule. Yeah, you know, fresh, freshly made. Or maybe she had homemade bread, you know. Oh, maybe. And, and, and really good water. Mm -hmm. like, so he came back. He's like, you know, this is, this is gourmet shit. This isn't just a handout. I'll take some more of that bread, please. I, know, the whole, I want the whole food stuff. Uh, oh, I know what we want to end on. Because we do have an alert. A gentle alert. 
can I make a little noise, but gently. Because this is not a chicken alert. No. It's not an Austin Pendleton alert. It's not um, many of the other kinds of alert. This is simply an awe alert. It's one of those stories that makes you go, aw. And here it is. A caller on 76th Avenue said that a stray cat had had kittens and kept bringing them to her. Aww. The caller had them in a box in her garage, Aww. but wanted them picked up by animal control. Oh, I guess, do you call the cops to get animal control? Is that how it works? I, I don't, don't know. Maybe you don't know, you don't know the number. Oh, maybe. Maybe that, that could be true. But anyway, yes, ladies and gentlemen, the awe alert. Because what's more awesome than chickens? What yeah, how does Joanne, how does Joanne, your guest? Johanna, him? yeah. Johanna. Yeah. How come she can jump like that? Oh, I don't know how. That's a great that, shot. Yeah, I love it. From a, from a few years back. But it's a, it's a marvelous um, shot. Oh. That was that. I where that little yellow corner was sticking up there in the frame. Anyway, I'm Dave Lefkowitz. That's my wonderful wife. You guys are you. And we are here in the neighborhood. We're just finishing up Greeley Times on Dave's Gone By. Mr. Horace Greeley was no fool. Oh, he was not. I'm sure that you agree with me that Greeley was no fool. But he is getting an that. Mr. Greeley was no fool. Yippee yi, yippee yi, yippee yi, 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 yippee yi, yippee yi, yippee yi. So, yes, you see me now in the little corner in the upper right of your screen because it's time for me to play and share with you the interview that Rabbi Saul Solomon did. Just a day ago, because, you know, it's Shabbos and, and Saul can't be bothered on, on Saturday. Uh, he's sleeping. He's not actually in shul. He's just sleeping in. But uh, he got to interview a Broadway and off-Broadway actress named Johanna Day. Now, she's had quite the career. Let me tell you a little bit about it. I mean, Rabbi Saul will tell you about her as well. But she got two, count them, two Tony nominations, one of them for Proof, the wonderful David Auburn play, uh, uh, or is it David Lindsay Bear? No, it's Auburn. And Sweat. Plus, she won a Helen Hayes Award for The Rainmaker, and she's just done a lot of theater in New York, and she's doing some theater now. You can go to the theater at St. Clement's Off-Broadway in Midtown. I think it's over on 46th Street, and see her in the epistolary play Pen Pals, it's basically two friends who write letters to each other over the course of a bunch of years. It's like A.R. Gurney's Love Letters and, um, well, as, and Dear Liar, the George Bernard Shaw play. So she's in it. Uh, it'll be kind of a rotating cast thing, but she's in there now with Nancy McCain, if you remember her from The Facts of Life. And, and you know, we love The Facts of Life. Not a show I ever watched, but the, Charlotte the, Ray. The band, girls, girls. Girls, 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 because Charlotte Ray, before she passed, she died, she was on this, this show. She she's, was actually a friend of the neighborhood. Um, Nancy McCain couldn't make it on the program today, but Johanna Day is. So she talked with Rabbi Saul about her life, about her career, about being an actress in New York, doing, you know, the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, the awards. The, the the big shows, the little shows, and what it means to be a theater person. So without further ado or don't, I want to let you know that Rabbi Saul has been with us since our very first episode back in October of 2002. He did a already, a, we weren't calling them rabbinical reflections back then. He just had, had kind of a guest segment. Now he's really... You know, if he's not doing sermons, he's interviewing people, or he's taking parts in other bits. It's been 22 years, and we are still thrilled, delighted, and a little bit um, unsettled. Whenever Rabbi Saul Solomon comes onto the show, here he has the great joy of talking with Johanna Day. Oh, shalom, my friends, shalom, my enemies. This is their old pal, 
Rabbi Saul Solomon, founder and spiritual leader of Temple Songs of Bitches in Great Neck, New York. And you know how much I love the theater. And if you love the New York theater, you will have seen this person to my left. Might actually be to your right. I don't know how these, these zoomy things work. Or, or both. Or both. <laughs> She is a multifaceted actress who can actually move both on and off stage and on and off camera. You have seen her in the Broadway shows Proof and Sweat. In fact, she was Tony nominated for both of those performances. She also won, ooh, 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 she won a Helen Hayes Award for doing The Rainmaker at Arena Stage over in Washington, D.C. She was on Broadway in... How I Learned to Drive, which was the Broadway revival of the Earth Broadway original How I Learned to Drive, which she was also in. And she just did a couple of months ago Scene Partners off Broadway with Diane Beast. Now she's in a whole different play with a woman named Nancy McCain. You may remember her from The Facts of Life. Charlotte Ray was actually on this program many, b before she was dead. We, don't, we tend not to interview her. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah sure. it's a very quiet interview. We try it once or twice, and it just, you know, bleh, very flat. But flat. nothing flat and boring about this wonderful lady here. Her name is Johanna Day. She's in Pen Pals Off-Broadway, and we are pals with her right now in the neighborhood. Shalom! Johanna, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Thank God. Thank God. So how is, how's the play going? It opened, uh, opens when? What, give it us opened on Wednesday night, this last Wednesday night. Click. So, is it frozen, or does every night you do something a little different, or, or uh, in terms well, of... Well, um, the language is frozen, but um, actually the stage manager said to me the uh, Wednesday night, she was like, it's fascinating watching you, you know, you're doing all these different things every night, and I said, well, that's because I'm, I'm still rehearsing. <laughs> oh! Well, that, that's, people don't know. They think off-Broadway shows, they rehearse for months, and they get together, they do. I mean, what'd you get, three weeks before, boom, you're on? Yeah. No, what? No. What'd you about, get? Uh, about six days. No. Yeah. How did it come together so quickly? Well, they, you know, they had done a production of it at Jersey Rep, and so they had a little time with it, and we did, it did change with, uh, uh, when I came in a little bit, um, just movement and sound and things like that. And of course I'm a different human being than the other wonderful actress. And, um, so yeah, it, it, you know, we had the letters there in front of us that we're reading, you know, our, our correspondence. Well, it's an epistolary show. So you don't, you don't have to memorize or not. To... No, I mean, you don't have to, but, uh, it's, uh, you know, we have to look up and look out as if we're talking to our uh, our pen pal. So um, it's interesting well, because you have it up here too. Yeah, you gotta, you know, you gotta That's, know. I should have asked for, in the first place. What is the show? What is the story of this by letters show? What is the synopsis? You... Um, well, it, it's it came about and was created by and written by uh, my, Michael Griffo, who his mom. Uh, for about 50 years had a pen pal in England and they were in New Jersey, uh, she was in New Jersey and um, when he started to create it he he realized he didn't want to use the real letters of his mom's because of privacy you know, privacy re reasons and um, so sorry, I'm falling apart um, so Are we all? Yeah. yep um, and so uh the letters are made up, but um, there's some truths in there, uh, back and forth. Um, so it's just about this friendship that starts in um, about what's happening with my hair. Um, anyway. What happened to my hair? You should not complain about hair. Tell me about this. Okay. <laughs> um, and it starts like in 1956. They're 14 years old, and um, they're assigned pen pals, and it's just this. They're just two regular women, you know, uh, but over 50 years, so many things happened to us in that time, uh, you know, marriage, children, death, disease, you know, love, young love, uh, first, old love, yeah. old love, first kisses, and they become very, very, very best friends. And it's, 
their adoration and love for each other is just so beautiful. And the play is, re they're really funny and also incredibly emotional parts, you know, that people, um, so it just, everyone can somehow, even though there's younger people that, well, who writes letters these days anyway? Right. Um, well, I have a series of tweets that are very moving. Yes, it? exactly. Right. Sure. Um, and, uh, but we've heard from young people that have seen the show and are just like, Oh, I want to write letters. I want to write letters. And, and, you know, people that there's people just in their thirties that had pen pals and there's people in their fifties and seventies that remember very well having pen pals. And it's just, I think it's such a beautiful, relatable show that, um, you know, isn't political and it's, I think it's something that's just very, very joyous right now. Now, speaking of family and things like that, I know that was a terrible segue, but do you you grew up with a large family. Are you like Irish Catholic and that's why they just they had eight of you or whatever, nine of you? I'm the youngest of nine, yeah. Yeah. yeah what was Catholic. it like? I mean, uh, I'm just, did you get the hand-me-downs of everybody? Did you ever get a new anything? Um... Yes, eventually, once those guys got out of the house. <laughs> okay, but it was a good, it was a happy, albeit chaotic home. It, uh, yes. My mom had a sign in the, um, in the kitchen that said, misery is optional. <laughs> At least she didn't have it forbidden. And then it, it, right. It, it, she, it, she made it, you could if you wanted to, but you could opt out. This is Right. Yeah. Well, you know, and I one thing about hand-me-downs, which was kind of fun for a while, or funny, was um, my sisters that are above, right above me, they're six years older, they're twins. So I was getting two of... Every, oh, yeah! Cool. Yeah, two outfits, two, you know, Easter dresses, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, my mom didn't make them dress the same, you know, past, I don't think, like, three or four. Oh, sure. <laughs> And, and hey, I come from a culture where we all dress exactly alike. Is it? Like, can I have your white shirt? Yeah, let me have your white shirt. All right, you're buying this good. Yeah, yeah. I know. Black coat. You know, I can do some black coat. This is, and, yeah, I like it. It's like a uniform. Basically. So, I'm, not to be sad or anything like that, but well, did, did you lose one of your uh, siblings? Yes. we. Um, my oldest brother, Stephen, and then the next born, uh, my oldest, our oldest sister, uh, Margie, Margaret, and I play Margaret in this play. Um, they, um, Stephen died of uh, dementia, and Margie died of Alzheimer's. Oh my God! Are you horrible question? Are you worried, therefore, that in the family? Well, you know, it, we talk about it a lot, but it's weird because, um, like, my niece uh, Margie's daughter, Kate, she and I were thinking, you know, when my dad was in the service, like. They lived in, you know, Camp Lejeune, you know, and I know a lot of these things have been reported from them, that, that, but as my other brother said, he goes, you know, they just picked this sort of time, time span where you could, you know, maybe claim that that might have affected your family. But, you know, it, my, my father was not, you know, affected by Alzheimer's or dementia. And my mother wasn't. Um, I think... You know how, like, I mean, I've been doing this for years. Walk into a room, don't know why, I have to go back into the other room and retrace my steps. I mean, I've been doing that for years, so... Um, Everybody, yeah. I, I was going in the synagogue. I was like, where, where the hell, where, where's aisle 15? I, I need grease for the... Oh, wait, whoops, it happens to me constantly. I know, and, and of course, because that's happened in our family, we, we all are a little bit extra, like, uh-oh. Uh oh, but you know, I, they don't know enough about these diseases, and, and they're trying to, you know, um, and they're making some progress with some experimental uh, drugs and stuff. I've even thought of like, you know, being a guinea pig for some of them before, but um, I don't feel. I mean, listen. Well, it's it's crazy because both my brother and sister use their minds a lot and 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 it helps to uh, 
I think to be an actor and to have to memorize things all the time. Well, that's That was my next question, aside from mentioning, coincidentally, that I call my synagogue Camp La Jew. So I... I, I, I <laughs> That's a great laugh. That's a laugh, ladies and gentlemen. Good. Now, Mary Louise Parker says that you know, like, she can make you laugh. You make her laugh like nobody else. So, is this? We we do. We have had some of the best times uh, in theater. We we became very close because I we had met before, but when we first did How I Learned to Drive, it was at the um, Vineyard Theater, and. Um, there were three women, and Carrie O'Malley was the original um, younger uh, chorus, uh, Greek chorus member, and she never needed, she never wanted to nap, you know, in between shows, but Mary Louise and I really needed to, and we had a, a cot, you know, about this big, so we, we both laid on it, feet to face, and we, you know, became very close, because we were both so determined to take a nap. No, I can't get that. But um, actually, the question I was going to ask was about memorizing lines. Has it gotten, were you always good at it and you're as good? Is it e easier, harder as, not that you're old, but as I am. the year? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? With It really, it really, really depends on the play. You know, it, oh. it really does. Um, and <clears throat> as time goes on, you know, people are like, what's your technique with that I mean I have one thing that sort of I sort of always do but um not not uh can't use this play as an example but excuse me thank you um but back in the day back in the olden times oh, um 1983 yeah all right yeah you know um you know, I, I was very comfortable. I like to keep the script in my hand for a long time during rehearsals because it connects. I connect it with where I'm going, what I'm doing, what emotional thing is happening. But, you know, I have a, you know, I trick myself into studying like a, in the very beginning. I'll have a show on that I've seen a million times and I'll have my script there. It's almost like tricking yourself into exercising. Like I'll sit down on the floor and go, I'm just going to stretch my leg <laughs> and then you end up doing a whole lot right. more fun. all right so do you do it out loud do you have a scene partner do you, is there a person that you, you normally you just no i'm i live alone so um that and, and um, believe me i've you know tricked friends into running lines with me you know over the phone and if they come to visit they don't know what they're in for but um i'm yeah. sure they enjoy it it's a little piece of, of like being a and they're seeing themselves, or no, they don't. Yeah, it's true. And, and, you know, if I go home to visit, you know, I'll get, you know, ask family members or my brother-in-law to run lines. Or, like, when I have a self-tapes, which I hate. Um, All right, like, auditions. Let, let, let's flip the, the, the thing on this. What are auditions like now? Because during 2020, 2021, it was sort of like, take yourself, do this, boom, boom, boom. Is it back to equity calls or your agent just sends you and you already have the job before you even audition. What is it like? Well, well okay. that, that happens with me with um, theater a lot, but um, 20, 2021, I mean, our business was completely shut down except for a little bit of uh, film and television. But yeah, I didn't work for, you know, two straight years. And um, now I think what has happened, I mean, there are some people that love doing the self tapes. I don't. Um, I usually ask if it's going to be a self tape. I haven't been in an in person audition in four years, um, so I usually ask for a Zoom, at least a Zoom audition, and that way you can ask, you know, come in with questions and and you can get notes and then do another take, and at least you have this human contact, you know, albeit weird. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, this, this, what we're doing now is human. It would be weird if you were just talking to a wall right now. Weird yeah, and, 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 um, you know, you, I personally, I, you know, you, you don't get a lot of time, um, to work on these, um, wait, let me interrupt myself. I, well, yes, it, I refuse to do, uh, theater, uh, uh, self tape. Cause it's just, it's, 
a totally different medium. It, it's not, you know, and I, and I, I've heard tales that, you know, sometimes people are, these like, uh, actors are really good at self tapes and they, for theater, and then they get them on stage and they don't know how to be a stage actor. Yes, they um, to talk like this because they're, they're used to talking to a microphone and they have no idea that you have to project to the fifth row, you know. Yeah. It's a whole body thing, you know. It's like, <laughs> not just vocally, but um, so it's been, for me, I'm just going to be honest, I, I, I really, really um, dislike self-tapes. I don't think I've gotten hired off of one of them. <laughs> it could be your attitude. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Let me ask you this. The, the one, the question I'm sure you've been asked four million times, when did you realize you wanted to be an actress? And when did you realize that, oh, not only am I acting as like a hobby or a thing, but this is really going to be my full-time, full-length, forever career? Well, weirdly, you know, I grew up in this, you know, in the woods, basically. And for some reason, you know, and my family remembers, like, it, like, three years old for no reason whatsoever. I was like, I'm going to be an actress. And um, yeah. then I grew up in this tiny little town in Virginia. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't even have a drama department or anything. We did like, you know, a talent show. Well, we would do like in high school, like one play a year, but it was during track season and I was a runner. So I didn't um, usually do it, but talent shows, stuff like that. And then. You should have done the runner stumbles. It would have been a perfect. Uh Exactly. Yeah. Um, and um, I had this like crappy boyfriend in high school, and I, you know, was like, "Oh my god, I'm never gonna, you know, leave this town." Of course, now I love going home because it's beauty. It's nothing but beautiful Virginia. But um, you know, I, I had gotten a letter from Student Search Service Project, you know, and, and I filled out and. So this school, American Academy of Dramatic Arts, um, uh, sent me an application. And, you know, I was like 17, 16 or 17. And I just set it down, like, in a room. And then finally broke up with that boyfriend. And um, one day I just said, Mom, I want to apply to this school in New York. And because um, there's one in New York and one in Los Angeles. And interestingly... You know, my mom and dad had gotten divorced, and he was out in Utah, and he was running a small business administrator. He was a small business administrator, and um, he actually got to meet with um, Robert Redford when he was starting Sundance. Okay. And he asked him, you know, my my daughter wants to go to this acting school, and blah blah blah. What would what would you recommend? You know, New York or Los Angeles, and. Mr. Redford, uh, said New York, if she really wants to learn to act. And, you know, I had no experience and my mom drove me up. No, we flew up. Do you remember People's Express? Oh my God. Yes. I was oh. back in, oh my, yeah. And it's so not to age you, but yes, I remember it's a long, it's a long. It's a, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, first of all, my friends and I could go home all the time and, you know, from New York for nineteen dollars, and you paid on the plane. <laughs> yes. And then, and then it went up to twenty nine, and then it went up to thirty nine. So no more. Um, but anyway, my mom and I flew up for one day, and um, I auditioned with two pieces that I had no business auditioning for. I knew nothing about it, but um, it wasn't the hardest school to get into, but it was a hard school to stay in, like to be invited back for the second year and then the production company. And so once that started, you know, I got out of school and, you know, I was like, uh oh, I have to, you know, make a living. <laughs> and so, you know, nightclubs, bars, restaurants, you know, and then one day I kind of woke up and was like, what am I here in New York for? So I joined these like nomad theater companies and, did black box theater and got into circle rep lab when that existed. Oh. And, um, did a, didn't, I, I'm going to stop you right there. Didn't Langford Wilson take a swing at you? How do you know all these things? I, I not only read the Torah, I, I read, you know, the alternate Torah that has stories like this in it. 
Sweet Sanford. It was a, it was a, unfortunate, but um, yeah, we were at the Cape Cod Theater Project, and uh, I was working on one of his plays, and he was just, you know, and he eventually quit drinking and stuff, but uh, you know, he was just, you know, we had all gone swimming, and my, one of the friends had left their computer or something in this the, one of these hosts' house, and anyway, he came out, and he was kind of saddling up to my friend John and um I was like back off Lambert back off and he like stumbly like tried to do that and uh and he you know I got home and um he called me immediately and uh was just horrified and and apologized profusely and um but it's a good story oh it's a great story it's a story you can, you can which is, I never would think of him as being like an angry, violent drunk. I, I don't know if he was. It was just that. I don't think. I don't think so. You know, he he had a lot to say about it. He was like, you know, I normally, you know, I don't drive. So when I'm home, I never have. You know, I only have a certain amount of booze at home. But where he was staying at the time, he had access, and you know, he he overdid it. Do you have a nice story about beside him apologizing? Like a fun story about Lanford and the other people at uh, Circle Rep? Arthur Coppett or maybe some of the other people who were... Oh, well, Circle... This was at Cape Cod Theater Project, but Circle Rep was wonderful. And I, I got my... Um, we did uh, a workshop. Well, we did the full play, uh, but in the lab, a uh, uh, play called Three Postcards by Craig Lucas. Right, yeah. And it was a musical with only like five songs in it. And then they moved us to the main stage. So we, you know, it was my first off Broadway professional job. And then you and were you in know, Blue Window, which is a really good play. I, I, oh, my I friend Dave, who saw that, it is a wonderful play. I love that play. That's such a beautiful play. I'm so lucky to have done those. And um, so, you know, young, we're young, and everyone's like, you guys are all going to get a TV series after this. Well, I was just like, Cut to, I'm back at the restaurant I was working at, you know, for many years. How, how did that, I mean, was there a point, did you ever do, obviously you didn't, make one of these deals that actors or actresses make? It's like, well, if, I, if I'm not in a series by age 30, I mean, you know what, age 35, that's it, 30, 39. If I don't get the, you know, et cetera. You, you well, went. you know, I try to, with when I talk or teach to young people, um, you know, I try, I, I'm like, I didn't do my first professional play until I was 28 or 29. So I had done a lot of uh, plays, but not, you know, under any union, you know. Um, here's the problem now is it, it's pretty slow and hopefully 2025 will pick up. But um, I have no other skill sets now. <laughs> I mean, like, well, can you computer pro? No, no. I mean, doing this is so complicated for me. Like, um, so, you know, there's always teaching, but. Um, well, there's OnlyFans. I, I, I have a page there. I, I, I owe them money. It doesn't always. <laughs> well, you know, and that's the thing. I, I'm a big uh, fighter for uh, uh, theater actors getting paid more. I mean. I've got a problem. I don't mind saying this either, but I have a problem with, um, I call them, I affectionately <laughs> call the, there's about four of them in the city, um, the Fraudway theaters that are, um, you know, um, not, not for profit theaters that are allowed to do Broadway shows and charge Broadway ticket prices and eligible for the Tonys. But, they don't pay the actors squat. I mean, literally, I mean, wait, literally zero, or is it like two hundred dollars a week, kind of? No, no, no. I mean, it's Broadway, right? So it's a, not a commercial run. So you're getting about, and they call it favored nations, meaning everyone gets the same paycheck, but you get about seventeen hundred dollars a week. All right. Before taxes, before twenty percent from manager and agents off the top, before you know when. A com and also another thing, this is in general, but so it's not just the not-for-profits, but, you know, they, uh, they, I don't know who I'm talking about, but we used to be able to have a quote 
right in, in theater. Like, say I got paid three thousand dollars a week, my last Broadway show. Um, I should be able to get that and more, but they don't. They don't honor that anymore. And they used to give you a bump in pay if you got a Tony nomination. And a producer one time said, um, "But they don't. You don't." Um, was like, "Well, you. Sh I'm. I'm expecting you to win it." You know, then maybe you'll get a bump. Like, wow, wow. Okay. Now I just sound like a bitch. <laughs> no, no, I'm, well, no. I, I. Do you know what I would do for three thousand dollars? I convert. I'd become a Muslim for three thousand dollars a week. You kidding me? <laughs> I give up. Pork. I don't know if I could give up pork. Four thousand. Oh, you know what? Yeah. You don't end up with that a week. Obviously, it's it's it's. That would be about. 1700 maybe right, which right. would be great <laughs> right now oh well well right well you're working off broadway we should remind people that you're in a show called pen pals which is at the theater at saint clement's is that on 46th where's that 46th between 9th and 10th Rest, restaurant row or, right yeah. yeah don't tell mom and all that and, it's, and yeah please no I, I i make a joke but um you know some of my friends came to opening and and um uh, I, I said to someone, I was like, even my talented, cynical, jaded, dear friends loved pen pals. They, you know, they, you know, they weren't like, this is corny or this is about, you know, pen pals. And it, they just are crazy about it and sending people to come see it all the time it's, now. We're sending people to come see it too. But we have a couple more minutes, I hope, with, with Johanna Day here. I know you have to run in. You know, fairly shortly. I know mean, you've got you've got business to attend to, but there's so much more we want to talk to you about. For example, can you tell the story of Patty's Clam House? I'm just ah. working there. So that was one of my many jobs. Oh, I got some other good jobs too. I worked for a publishing company uh, that published, you know, sort of country accent swimmer USA, and also porn. Oh, hey, you know, why not? Magazines. <laughs> but Patty's Clam House, um... They could know, hold the there. magazine Patty's Clam House, too. It would have been, but I, I, I am, I'm sorry. I... Well, there was a, you know, it was a very long restaurant, and so the all the lobsters were up in front in a tank, and the, the people would order, pick what one they wanted, and the, that's they scared me to death. And so what you're supposed to do is, like, Walk by, show them their lobster. Walk by into, the, and then go live, into the live and moving the lobster. Well, yeah, the rubber bands were on there sometimes. Um, so basically, I would run full speed and go like, "Here it is!" and just <laughs> keep going. Oh my! Well, you did. How long did you do that? Like two months or so? How long were you in that gig? Mm, I really don't remember, but not very long because. Um, uh, I didn't have enough money to get the right clothes to wear, and so I think I was fired. Um, Wait, I wear, like, fish-protected? Uh, no, it was just a simple, I forget what it was, but I was pretty miserable. I also worked at a Long Island Long Island grab house as a singing waitress. What? No, is that fun or just horrible? Horrible. <laughs> well, because you're up there, you know, they're make they're like some people are saying like you gotta get up and sing a song, and I had like a repertoire of like three, and um, okay. but you're, come on, what songs you gotta you gotta tell us what songs were you singing? Well, you nothing really sing yeah. classic. Usually like a blues song or a Patsy Klein song or something like that. All right. But um, you'd be up there and you you're um customers would be like with their coffee going like yeah, yeah right you need, would you please come and wait on me <laughs> the, the really the skilled actresses who rehearsed uh they, they could pour while this this is yeah while up on stage though oh yeah well yeah well 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 they could pour forward they can sort of splash and you aim, it takes some time, but you can right. Now, let me also ask, well, while we still have a moment or two or three, of Johanna Day, so, so we talked about Lanford Wilson, we talked about some of the other people, what about being in a play, a new play, by Edward Albee, when he was still alive, you know, so I assume he was around. Do you have any oh, support? yeah. Yeah, yeah, please. So we first did it at Hartford Stage, um, and uh, 
he was around, you know, obviously the whole time. Cause I, the part I played, I uh, was a, he'd always thought of, um, uh, Peter's wife. He always had that character in his head. So when he wrote Peter and Jerry, which th I think the name changed, um, I got the part of, um, Anne, Peter's wife. So he made a first act to zoo story. And, um, I went in and auditioned for it and I thought the audition went really horribly. And, and I was like, that's fine. That's in my head. I was like, that's fine. That's fine. Um, you know, I have another job to do or something. And then they called me back. And then the Pam McKinnon, the wonderful director, Pam McKinnon said that he, after I left the room, I don't know if it was my first audition or second, but he leaned over to her and goes, what a difference a day makes. <laughs> Nice. One of our first run throughs, he, you know, we were all just so nervous and, um, and then we did it again at second stage, but, um, four years later. And then, um, we did a run through in the rehearsal room and we're all like waiting in the hallway, just like on a break. And he comes out and, um, he goes, that's a pretty good play. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's what you you know because you're nervous. You go no, and you have the playwright whom you respect enormously because of the history. And he's like, ah, that, did that make you all go like ah. a little bit? Yeah, I mean, yeah. and we thought we were going to do it right away in the city, like the next year. But I think for some reason there were too many Edward Albee plays going on at the time, and so that was a big disappointment. But I got to stay in the play when we did it for it. Four, um, four years later, I had it easy. He, I mean, I think he was harder on the men a little bit, but I, I loved him so very much. And we held hands a lot. And, um, I, he came to a play I did at the Cherry Lane. It was probably the last time I saw him and we walked to the subway together and he said, I'm writing a play and I have a part in there for you. And then, <laughs> then he up and died on me. How do you how do you get over the disappointment? I mean, like you're in a, a limited run now through December twenty second. In are you confident between your agent and the stuff that you do on TV and the, that you can support yourself for the rent? Now, barring another pandemic, that you make enough money that you can afford how to live and live well decently. I am not confident about that right now. Um. Since the pandemic, it's really a lot of things have changed. And, um, you know, I think the studios are being, the, for film and television, studios are being sold. Things are in the, you know, in interims. And, and um, you know, the agents and manager, my manager and agents think that it's, it's going to pick up. I mean, you know, this age white woman, I don't know how needed I am these days. But age white man. My synagogue won't even let me in half the time. <laughs> but I'm not, let's end on something happier, because I know you have to run. But, but I, you mentioned, I mentioned also Blue Window, this, this play that you love. Now, you were in, in there with an off-Broadway act, Broadway actor, too, uh, John Benjamin Hickey, veteran actor. Please, J. Smith Cameron, Allison Janney, I mean, Ellen McLaughlin, John Hickey. But he did something to you, apparently, in that play frequently. That, come on, come on, I'm Jewish, you have to, you have to share the story. Well, I, my character, you know, ironically was a, a very, very quiet girlfriend of one of the characters, David Warshawski, uh played my boyfriend, and, um, and also interestingly, my character sings a song in the middle of it, well, everyone freezes, but, well, I, I, yeah, why, well, right. I was on, I was kind of stuck on this couch, you know, I didn't, wasn't wandering about, you know, much, and he liked to go by and leave a little silent but deadly for me when I had no option to move. How could he time it? How would he manage every single to eat right before going off on stage? I mean, no, I don't know. It wasn't all the time, but like. We had so much fun doing that play. It was really great. Yeah. Well, it has been really, really great talking with Johanna Day. Please, please go to theater at St. Clements and get your tickets. Come see it. It's so great.
Ten pals by Griffo. What's was his, his name? Michael uh, Griffo and um, Nancy McKeon and Johanna Day. Johanna Day. Who directed it? What's the name of the uh, directress? Oh, Suzanne. Oh, don't. Oh, God, I'm going to kill myself. So I should have looked it up. I didn't mean to put you in a thing. I'm just... Uh, you know. Take that out. <laughs> Dan, she's wonderful. I love her. Well, we love you, Johanna Day, and we wish you much success with Pamela. Are you in anything after that? Are you? Should we look for you in something soon? I don't have anything at the moment, but um, I am going to come back and do it with Nancy for a week in February again. Oh, but, but see it now, everybody, and then you'll want to see it again in February. And there's all these other amazing actresses coming in and going to be rotating doing it also. Oh, oh do they need a rabbi? Do they? Uh, they might. I, I, well, I, the, I, next, the next ones are, uh, the next uh, group up is um, the wonderful Sharon Lawrence and the wonderful uh, Kathy Curtin. Cool. Oh, wonderful. But you know what? You see her, and then you can you know, see Joanna yeah. Day, and then see them and compare. Joanna Day will be better, I promise. <laughs> the thank silently you. judge. Um, but right, thank judge. you. Thank you so much, and, and shalom to you. Shalom. In the neighborhood with the great Rabbi Saul Solomon and even greater Johanna Day. Remember that the play is called Pen Pals. It's running at theater at St. Clement's over on West 46th Street in Manhattan now through December 22nd. Get your tickets. So, and by the way, we want to thank, thank both Johanna as well as the uh, press rep Joe Trentacosta for setting that interview up and bringing her to the neighborhood on this Saturday, December 14th, 2024. You're watching the 971st episode of this program. We're calling it Seize the Day. Get it? Because we've seized the... Get it, Johanna? Get it? Get it? Get it? That's the kind of comedy we do here in the neighborhood and have been doing since October of 2002. Please remember that, you know, if, if you enjoyed that interview and maybe you have actor friends or, or people who like her stuff or like Off-Broadway Theater and want to see it again and they just missed it, it's okay. Lots of ways you can catch up with Dave's Gone by interviews and episodes that you either missed or want to see again or want to share with other people. It's simple. Just go to our archive website davesgoneby.com davesgoneby.com because we have our first episode there the one that we did in 2002 right we have our 12th episode we have our 412th episode our 912th episode all of these things whether they were the early radio shows the stuff that we were doing on college radio with all the music we were playing plus our recent our, our last six or seven years on video as a video podcast, all of that, the archives are for free. You can watch them at any time. If you get a little tired or bored, you can stop and come back later or skim through the whole thing to watch the parts that you just want to. There's separate archive for the interviews, as well as for some of the skits and sketches that we've done. There's a special uh, archive place for all Rabbi Saul's rabbinical reflections. I mean, it's just like this amazing repository of thousands of, and I didn't make a suppository joke, a repository of thousands of hours of Dave's Gone By content at your fingertips, davesgoneby.com. We also put up most of our stuff at archive.org. We have a channel there, and they've got archive.org working fine again after that horrible hacking incident they had in October when they had to go down for three weeks and then start coming back up slowly. They're back. So archive.org is the same stuff as davesgoneby.com, but maybe you want to watch it there for whatever reason, um, or, or you want to support them because they're a nonprofit organization that just hoards art and entertainment and literature and culture from the past hundreds or something of years, so long as it's in relative public domain or they have permission, go check it out there, archive.org. We also put our audio archives at castbox.fm. This is a place specifically for podcasting, and specifically like if you're on the go, you just want to listen to the show. You're jogging in the local park. You're on a train commuting somewhere, and you've got 45 minutes or something to, to kill, and you don't want to read. Hey, just listen to the show. 
you can do it. Castbox.fm is a cool place to do that because it's literally meant for podcasting. Castbox.fm, the Dave's Gone By channel. And then uh, we also have a YouTube page, which sometimes gives us fits over copyrighted material. But we deal. Uh, really, the best place to start is davesgoneby.com. And, of course, our Facebook page, Dave's Gone By, where the last bunch of years of our shows, because we've been live streaming them to Facebook, are automatically archived. So it, it's there, too. Lots of places to know about the show. Don't forget, we also have our Twitter feed, Radio Dave 2. It's Radio Dave, the number two. And Rabbi Saul's Twitter feed, at Rabbi Saul. Solomon. Um, totally, you know, lots and lots of ways for you to connect with this program, and this being our 971st. Well, we have some more stuff to do. We have our Colorado Limerick of the Damned and story time about H.J. Hines. But before we get to that, I have made a promise that we are going to do Bunyan Watch. Now, Bunyan Watch is all about the size, the shape, and the condition on the bunions on my feet. We were doing this because about, wow, uh, maybe two years ago now, I started teaching, and I bought a new pair of sneakers, and I thought I worked them in, but I hadn't worked them in enough, and I was on my feet all day, so I came home, and not my bunion, but my toe, uh, and above the toe near my bunion, had this kind of open sore. It was really painful, and bleeding, and crusty, and scabby, and so, you know, being me, I'm like, let's make fodder out of this. Let, let, let's this be a time-killing thing on my program that we can have fun and talk about. So I created Bunyan Watch to see basically how my bunion healed week by week by week on the program. Because it stopped hurting after a couple of days, but then it still took a while for the, the scab to form and then peel off. So every week I'd be like, hey, let's take a look at my bunion. Uh, and, and we've just been doing that almost every week ever since. I do love this segment. I get to share my bunions with you. She's bunion, she's bunion. She really is a fun one. She's bunion. Listen, doctor, to my plea. Time for bunionectomy. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Bunyan Watch for this Saturday, December 14th, 2024. Let's take a look at the bunions on Dave's feet. So the, here's my right foot bunion that I will be sharing with you. Um, there we go. Get up on here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, it's so bright. So bright with the thing. Let's, let's do it against my black pants. Look! Behold! Mount Bunyan! It's rather pinkish, but of course I'm also twisting it to make the bunion really pop right here. So let me get that even closer in. Little, little. Oh, thank you. Look at that. Behold. So it, it looks enormous when I'm doing it like this. Here's the sloth measuring thing. Thank you, my dear. Uh, so we can see that, it, oh, oh, it really, it's rather big, but you know, the, the, Slots make it look larger. Oh, it's like home shopping channel. Hey, oh, home now, shopping channel. Let's compare it okay. to my left foot on you. Okay, they are not giving me any pain at the moment. It's home shopping That's channel. Good, yes. Remember home shopping channel? They used to do things like oh, that. Oh, Mary! Yeah. Look at the size of that bunion. No, home oh. shopping channel was a little bit more low rent. Happy dance! No, happy that was dance. QVC. That was QVC. Oh, that's QVC. So, so um. I should mention, my bunions are not painful, okay, thanks. Um, which is the most important thing, and they look normal, normal for me, they got, they're not growing appreciably. They're still there, and I do have this thing where, where um, I've got to be careful when I stretch my leg at night, because I feel like it's going to suddenly cramp up and tighten, which is probably connected to the way my bunions align my feet and the bone that structure. Might be restless leg. My friend had that, Arlene, I'm from yeah. Colorado. Well, but this is it isn't like I'm jogging my feet. If I stretch and this thing goes like this, I, it, it, it can be enormously painful. That's why I like wearing my Birkenstocks because they align my feet, make my feet straight without, you know, I think they've helped, because I've had worse oh. bunions, but I think the Birkenstocks have helped 
align my because they get your toe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it's I, interesting. I love. I haven't worn them in years, but I love my toe things. I don't know toe they separators. Are, to be with you. True. But as much as I love toe separators, I can't wear togs. I can't wear. Those oh, those yeah. shoes where they, where they have keep a thing. Keep it together and keep Ooh. your toes together forever. Toes together. I'm keeping my toes together forever. That's yeah. an anti thong song, right? Keeping your toes together. You're not separating them. Oh. You're keeping your toes together. Most of I walk, yeah. Keep your toes together forever. Never heard that. I made that up. Here. It's, oh, you made that up. Oh, it's cool. A, it's a Madonna song, Keep It Together, but I adapted it to your to your toes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Are those your socks over there? Yeah, well, I, I have to take them well, off for bunion watch. And what the heck happened to my sneaker? Look at this. What's wrong with your sneakers? I, I use this. Look at that. Like, that's bad. I use it for the treadmill here. Here. Oh, my, in case you get cold. Sock time. It might get cold. It's cold, yeah. Oh, I should put the, I should have ended bunion watch kind of with the the putting on of the socks. That's a whole different segment. It's like a, that's it's, your fans only page, honey. Oh, no, let's do it. Let's do it. This will be like an, an opposite strip tease. But what you they need better them? socks than that. What? These are my socks. Yeah, they should be fancy socks if you're going to... No, it's like a sweat sock moment. Mm -hmm. There we go. When you're smiling... Oh, you constantly knock over my baby lamp. Why do you do I don't know why the lamp keeps falling over. Where do you keep putting it? Ugh. In the police, it should be. Ah. You keep knocking it. So now, my bunion is protected. It is well. You can even see it from the side there. Look! Look how bulgy it is. It's lovely. Boing, 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 it's cute. Boing, boing. I like it. Ah, so that was bunion watch. Yeah. Worth waiting for, don't you think? We still have our Colorado limerick of the dam to do. Let me get this up also. Um, and we have coming up right now, part three of story time. Where we tell the not boring story boring. of H.J. Hines is not boring. How can potatoes find boring. it boring? It is no, it's not. It's not First boring. First of all, they're they're not. They have the attention span of like two seconds. Then they like to see pretty color pictures. No, they want the ketchup bottles to look like that. But they're not they're not satisfied, David. And they get no ketchup during the whole event. They think it's oh. like a ketchup buffet. Because we don't eat in here. This is your office. No, we keep I, this... I remember. I, they could oh, eat yeah. in here. But they, they want... Um... Do you really want ketchup all over the carpet? Well, we had a ketchup... Oh, no, that's in a... The ornament is... Where did we put the oh, ornament? Um... Yeah. No, we, we got to be careful. Hold on. I will get something that will help. Yes. Because I'm... We're, we've been telling the... <laughs> I can't believe I thought they have waited for this. Tell me a story, tell me a story, tell me a story, remember what you said. You promised me, you said you would, you gotta give in, so I'll be good. Tell me a story, then I'll go to bed. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, so it is story time. And I thought by picking this so story. This is the one we got from Hallmark. Show me, show me, show me. This isn't the breakable one. This is a plastic one from Hallmark. Perfect, perfect. There we go. All right, oh, so. Oh, interesting. Oh, pretty. So, Patego, oh, here yeah. you go. Yeah, that's a good time. Oh, yeah. All right. Hallmark so, will you be good? Up. Will you, will you? Is that, is that a licensed one or a fake one? Oh, so look at this. It's, it's from, it's from this Hallmark. Yeah, I got the yeah. license. And it's potato size. Look at it. Potato. No, this is perfect. Like this if you made a ketchup size for them, that would be the size ketchup they would have. Yeah. No, I, I don't drink too fat. Oh. Uh oh. Yeah. yeah. Uh oh. <coughs> Let me see the bottle. Oh, hold on. <laughs> they digest it very quickly. It's just sugar. No, I want to see the <laughs> bottle. Thing, yeah. This is really. Cute. It's got to be registered high. It so is. That's a real yeah, thing. it yeah. is. This is exactly. The, but the funny yet yeah, is, it's a two thousand. Maybe they'll make one every year. They're going to make a different ketchup bottle. They had another one, but this is the upside squirting one. It's like Lionel. Yeah, they probably no, do your pony chair. Wow. Wow. It's actually perfect proportionally sized for potato. It really is. It's really like the perfect size if you were to get a ketchup bottle. Um, you know? Bigger. But potato. He, he, he drinks potato. from the real Heinz bottle. Yeah. Potato. Hmm. Uh, do you want... Daddy's going to read the story. You want me to take away the ketchup? No! 
No, oh, best story ever. Story. Best story. Okay, 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 okay. Let him have his ketchup, but he could read. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Potato. I'll put it on his arm. Here, give it to me. It's oh, yeah, you could do that. He can wear it. Okay, give me All one right. second. So, left arm, this arm, right? Left arm, here. Oh, can you attach it to my vein? You don't have veins, Potato. Shh, Potato, please don't tell him that. Oh, look at this. Look, look. Now, he's okay, there look, like, now Potato is yeah. perfectly he's right pointed here. towards my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> He's holding it there. Like, oh yeah, I'm jaunty. Look at that. Wee! Oh, Wee! All right, potato. Now, will you He's let me read? The sugar. That's not the cook high So, we discussed the story as told by who's the guy? Michael Bergan in this number one New York Times bestselling series of all these things with the, the giant head people. Hey, potato. Potato. Where's ketchup? Give it to me now. Okay, that's interesting here. Oh, okay. I'm asleep now. I'm in a sugar coma. Oh. I got my diabetes. It's, it's like a bedtime story for he's you. Diabetes, he's got diabetes. Yes, he does. Did you tell him he's got diabetes? I didn't tell him he had diabetes. He's got type 1 mm. diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Oh lord. So, we've been telling the story of H.J. Holmes. It's Hines. okay. Look, they sleep like the dead. You're fine. Of, and he's his family. They got gardens. They got farms. He's helping on the farm, and he um, even gets his own plot of land. Starts tilling that, selling the vegetables in town to make a bit of a, a profit for himself and to, to put a little store aside. So he's doing this. He's got a wagon. He's becoming successful. Eventually, he starts his own company, where he's pickling things and selling things. Like was it was it relish or something? What was he making? It was horseradish. He began with some yeah. kind of a slop. <laughs> <laughs> and his brilliant idea was that so many people were selling products yeah. that were doctored. They were like, adulterated. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, adulterated. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, we're going to sell our things in clear bottles so the consumer can see exactly yeah. what we're putting in there, what we're buying, and it went really well. Is that when he did the NGO tomatoes, like the? Monsanto no, he, he, just, he would have. Oh, I'm sure he would have if he had yeah, a Monsanto yeah. back then. Because he probably figured out a way to keep pests off his and crops. To keep the tomatoes red. Oh, well, that too. That too. Mm. Human blood. Human blood. No. And then he, went, he, he grew too fast, too soon during a recession, and had to declare bankruptcy. He had to go back into business with a new business, couldn't even be the CEO. Where did he go with? He had to be an employee oh, yeah, and put his family as the, or, or other people as the heads of the company that he was really running. Yeah. So he, it's, it's a story of doing an end run around the tax when laws. When did he get the hydrocephalus? It, I don't know. It, it's, it affects everybody in this series. It affected yeah. Paul McCartney and, yeah, and John Lennon. Helen Keller, they all have these enormous giant yeah. heads. I know who, who had the idea to do this. Well, I think so. I'll tell you for psychology, yeah. like neonatology says, like things that have a bigger head are cuter. So they make them, makes them more cuter, right? Than if it was just like a portrait of the person. What do you think, Potato? Oh, so adorable. Potato, have some ketchup. Oh, Go back I to like sleep. It. Good show. Good show, Daddy. Good thank show. Thank you, Potato. Thank you. Let me oh. sleep now. Oh, oh, thank you. So now we get to chap. Yeah, yeah. I got the diabetes. <laughs> no, you don't. He keeps saying he's got type one diabetes. <laughs> if anything, a potato would have tuberculosis because no, the tubers. Got, I got diabetes. You know, all right. So that means, but if you have diabetes, that would mean that you shouldn't have the sugar oh, no, and salt. Oh no, the sugar keeps me right. Oh, oh, that's right. So the sugar helps my diabetes. High so, glucose corn syrup. Why is diabetes so, tea, or either one, so dangerous? Because potatoes, diabetes is very bad for potatoes. What can it do? I mean, for... Yeah, but he's always... No, I need potato. a potato. No. I know, I know, I know. It makes me want to go sleeping after I eat ketchup. Well, that's okay. That's all right, potato. Now, go, go to sleep. I'm going to read the story that you find so boring oh. about the man who gave you the ketchup. No, Mommy you... got that from downstairs from Hallmark. Mm -hmm. Mom went to Hallmark and got that for me. Yeah, it's that's... not breaky like the one in the kitchen is glass breaky. Oh, no. Well, that's that's a scary one. I'm always afraid about that one. This one's non breaky. I like it. I wonder if the top... Does it do... No, it looks no, like it right now. That would be so cool. Let's. This is chapter four. Mm, of how many who, chapters are there? Seven. Uh, <laughs> actually, 
There's probably... 57 chapters. Oh, God, no. There's eight chapters. Oh, God. How We're not even you... through halfway. Oh. Well, this is only part this three of them. worse than War and Peace, Dabby. There you go. Oh, I can't. Well, yeah, but I can't let the viewers down who are now so invested in the H.J. Hines story because I can't just stop the book in the middle. We're, we're, gonna, we're reading the story. Just give them ketchup -y. How can I give them? How can I give our viewers ketchup potato through the through the how? I'm probably going to be scratching sniff television at some point. Well, this is called Seeds of Success. Seeds of Success. Building a successful company was hard work, but Henry had been working hard since he was a boy. He's a good man. He was not going to slow down now. And even as he tested new recipes, potato, for diabetes? For, well, maybe low sh sodium, low sugar, yeah. uh, low glucose. Yeah, maybe. Because they weren't eating high fructose corn syrup; he was using sugar. Why I'm sure. They, or why, vinegar. Who, who made it into diabetes? He's going to keep saying diabetes. He's going to just keep saying that. Uh, he traveled and watched over his workers. How oh many my even, God! What? Slave driver. Probably. Well, yeah. Henry did find time to keep a diary. Oh. And he described details of his work and family life. After inviting his employees to his home for dinner one night, he wrote in his diary that, quote, all learned much and were highly entertained and amused. And got yeah. Yeah. All his employees were smiling and saying, oh, yes, we're learning so much. Thank you. Oh, this is so interesting. Oh, your wife playing the piano. Love it. Yeah. 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 Fool yourself, Harry. I think it was a, it was a swinger party. Oh, could People. it be? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, put your keys in and somebody gets with ketchup man. Watch him do squirt time. Or they do something with a bottle that we don't want to really know he about. He likes to do squirting with his bottle. Now, early in 1879, I like that. Henry, H.J., Henry Hines, Sally, his wife, and their children left their rented house in Pittsburgh and they moved back to Charlottesville. Because they were so freaking boring! <laughs> But you, you've got to allow some, you know, cesuras and, and gentle passages to come back up to the exciting oh, stuff. There'll be more ketchup, I promise. Okay. Uh, Henry played an active role in his church. All right, boring. And he was especially dedicated to the idea of Sunday schools. So while their parents went to church services... To torture the children of the families <laughs> at the dinner. Well, children did attend classes to learn about the Bible and their Christian faith. Okay. Oh. The Henry viewed religious classes as a way to teach children, a great way to teach them about God and help them become better people. And have them become more, more obedient workers. Probably, yes. But, kind of like Pullman, Henry himself was known for his generous ways. Oh. Poor men could count on him for a meal. And he sometimes loaned money to his customers so they could stay in business. So, oh. he might have been, like a lot of the bosses back then, oh. not a great place to work, but... Not the worst boss in the world either. Miss Pittsburgh, what can I tell you? Not no, the best place no, to live. No, pretend you're going to love this. You're going to oh, like yeah, this. Tell me. Along with keeping a diary, yeah. Henry also kept a recipe book. Oh, what is a recipe? What's a book? Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm a little burning now. And although he, he still used his mother's horseradish recipe, he also created recipes of his own. Most he kept secret or he wrote down in code. Oh, no. Only his relatives at the company knew the full recipes. So it's like, remember Coca-Cola? would have it still yeah, does. They have the recipe in a vault or something. Yeah. I'm sure they do still at Heinz. Yeah, I like it. Now at times, uh-oh, Henry also tried to copy recipes from his competitors. That oh, bastard. Oh, no, plagiarisms. One of the foods Henry tried to copy, to imitate, mm -hmm. was called Chow Chow. Oh, chow chow is like a, is like a trail mix, right? Not really. It's a combination. They have like the dog trash chow or something. They put like pretzels and all kind of, uh, you know. Maybe savory. that's what they call, it's yeah, a different yeah, yeah. thing though. Back in the day, this chow chow was a combination, you would like this, of cauliflower mm. and other pickled vegetables in a mustard and vinegar oh, sauce. No. Oh, God. That's a Why? gas tummy well, yeah, well, It'd be a good dip. Yeah. But when copying Chow Chow yeah. or other condiments, Henry made his version stand out by offering the highest quality food. Oh, I like that. So he made Chow Chow Pow Pow, right? He made Chow Chow clean. He is a clean eater. He want, well, that, that was kind of the point of Henry High. It was clean, sanitary, he grew good up with 
with uh, Kellogg because Kellogg had those same principles of like mm. eating healthy. I, the phones were in the other room. I can't look. Oh, so, yeah. there. I don't know. Temporary is yeah. But although I, Kellogg's didn't put things in clear. No, but Kellogg's was a little about health and nutrition and wellness, like food to live, like that. Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, when not tinkering with recipes, Henry developed ways to make his products more convenient. For example, customers usually had to buy vinegar out of a large barrel at the local store. Mm, vinegar yummy. man, I have to wear a mask to be a yummy, vinegar man. Yummy, That was my job in olden times. <laughs> was it really? Yeah, I like the vinegar. I wonder if like women who were menstrual, they, they just dipped themselves into a vinegar barrel. <laughs> to get... I don't know, vinegar is probably acid. I don't, I can't think. Ah. Well, yeah, but yeah. douche, you would douche with, not you. No, but nobody would. You shouldn't. I thought you drink water. No, the, you shouldn't observe, You shouldn't change your body's pH in any capacity. Well, how do you stop the stank? You don't. You don't? You, you get people who realize the stank is normal. Maybe put a Tums up there or no, something. Listen, have you looked at your own tushy? Oh, no, please, people I know. Who live, people who live in glass tushy should not throw a She's true. She's true. Yes. Your tushy and shirt have a lot in common. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, go ahead. My Christian, this story. have a lot in common. Read the story, Daddy. Give me the ketchup. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't even it. One more ketchup. One more <laughs> ketchup break. Talk about recipes, potato. Oh. So, so instead of people having to go to the vinegar man. <laughs> That's horrible. I would not want to do that. Oh, God. Right. Henry began selling his vinegar in smaller bottles that were easy to carry home. David, I think it's he's next to the hydrochloric acid man. <laughs> the arsenic man. That's right. <laughs> I need my arsenic. Well, can you imagine like the Tabasco man or the uh, Sira Sriracha yeah, man? The, those like anything that touches. Remember when Murray had that um, the one medicine, and then you have it and you touch it. It was on your fingers, and if you ever went like this, you it was like bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's bad. You could really damage. Oh, yourself. absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, I hope they wore gloves. I'm guessing, or maybe they got so used to it. Well, they were like a ladle or something in an apron. Because vinegar, I mean, vinegar wouldn't be the worst thing to put on your skin. But if you dig it constantly, yeah. it's so... If that was your job, for God's sake, glass is at least something. Now, you're going to like this, you're going to like this too, I hope. Yeah. People in Pittsburgh knew Henry as, any crossing the Lancy fans here, the Pickle Man! He's the ketchup man! So he was still selling a large variety of foods, including jelly and apple butter and chili sauce. We just bought, for the first time, we just bought chili sauce last night. For your chips. Yeah, could have, probably Heinz makes. We could have gotten Heinz, but great. what we got was pretty good. It was organic from the Shishi Poo Poo. Nothing yeah. but the best for you, baby. Well, we got the cheapest one. At least credit me with that. Yeah. We got the five dollar one. Well, you wanted, but I read it. That was the one that was the most appropriate because it was Thai. It was Thai company Thai and, and it was sweet. made for the. Yeah. Although those chips are what the my colleague who got it said they're also. And my other colleague who lived in China said they're very popular in China because yeah. I only know them. From like Thai restaurants yeah. as an appetizer. Because instead of like when you yeah. go to a Chinese restaurant, yeah. you get these crispy noodles, the, the flat noodles, yeah, or the yeah. bigger, better ones. In Thai restaurants, they sometimes give you these shrimp chips. Yeah, You've seen them. Yeah, yeah. They're white and yeah, puffy. puffy. Like a cheese doodle, but puffier. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And without the yellow and the, the they orange give, color. They give sauce with it. Yeah. Well, that sauce is a sweet chili sauce, yeah. sweet and hot yeah. chili sauce. It's so good. But, but it's yeah. not only in, in, um, in, for in Thailand, we just associate it because that's how we experienced it. But my colleague who brought it, like, when she came in, I was like, oh, David will love this. And a few people ate it who lived in China or had experience, but people were like, oh, you know. No, they're yummy. They're people, yummy. Yeah, you know. A lot yeah, of people eat, what was that stuff, that uh, pirate booty? It's kind of that same. Yeah, like a yeah. cheese doodle kind of. It's got a nice texture. Yeah. and uh, But they're, they're delicious alone. Mm -hmm. You dip them in chili sauce. Well, that's the mixture. And then you could also put a little peanut butter, too, and do, like, a mix. Yeah, peanut soy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, how did we get to this? Oh, because... Oh, bottling stuff? Chili sauce. Chili sauce. See, when he was making... Heinz was making chili sauce. Henry get also... Get to the ketchup part, Daddy! All right, we can... Get I to think the ketchup. Who cares about chili and stupid old vinegar bottle? Well, Henry wanted to provide customers with unusual condiments, kind of like Trojans, they couldn't find anywhere else, like Asian quince jelly. Mm, yeah. Or, or maybe it's 15. It's Asian quince jelly, which no, would be I a real it's like, cultural it's mix. It's probably just like Estrad or like a, it has like a... a Citrusy kind of whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, in 1880, oh, the yeah. company had its most successful year ever. What did they do? In Pittsburgh, yeah. people saw teams of horses pulling wagons carrying Heinz products. And the company was also, the name was printed on the side of the wagons. 
Grocery stores boasted in their ads, boasted Whoa, that they carry yeah. Heinz. They know the deal. And Henry. He was, oh, he was the Pittsburgh Mafia. <laughs> now, now, Potato, look at this. Check this out. Check I can't out. I see it on my face down. Show me. Look at that. Look at the giant, enormous bottle. On, oh, can you see? Yeah, it's nice. It's, it's red beautiful. Red. Yeah, it's not in red color. That's fake. It's not red. It, he it, says it's not if it's You think the library would be mad if we inked in oh, red? Yes. Yeah, they probably I would. think the kids would love it, but the librarians wouldn't. Well, Henry also sent his salesmen to fairs and other public events to order free sound. I wonder if they're building to the World's Fair here. Mm -hmm. Henry was sure that once people tasted Heinz products, they would look for them in their own stores. Yeah. He's right. So along with a growing business, Henry also had a growing family. He's using his pickle. His son Clifford was born in 1883. Mm -hmm. um, while Henry loved his family, traveling for work meant he spent a lot of time away from Sally and the children. Yeah, but it, um, Look at that. Look at that! Pickles! Pickles! What? That's a stupid show. It should be better That's with... What's a pick? It's a pickle tank car. I like it, man. Yeah, People beautiful. like pickles. Probably because pickled stuff lasts longer, right? When you didn't have refrigeration. Yeah, you can just bring it right over on the truck. That, yeah, yeah. The keeps no it. ice. Nothing. Yeah. That's right. You, they, I don't, you're not even supposed to refrigerate ketchup after opening. You just put it back. I know. I don't even wait. I just drink a whole bottle straight down. I know. Yeah, here it goes. Have leftovers. Who yeah. said they? Yeah. Show them the real bottle on TV. Show them the real picture. He wants them to show you the real color of one. Oh. The one he's holding. Oh, here we go. Show here them, go. Daddy. That's real. Yeah. That's a legitimate trademark. -y. It actually is. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, Potato. I'm sorry, Potato. Oh, boring. Boring. <laughs> boring. Boring. Oh, thank God. Here we go, Potato. Did you break it? If that was the metal, if that was the, if, if that, that was the glass was, one, we would be. It would be bye byes now. It would be like mommy, you cut your thingy. Oh, thank you. There we go. It's fine. It's thank fine, you. potato. It's helping my diabetes feel better. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, daddy. You're, You're welcome. The best. Potato. You're most. You're welcome. the best dad okay. ever. So, so a little bit more of this chapter. In 1884, he traveled by train. Heinz did, yeah. where the company had an office, and as far south as Florida. Remember, this guy started oh, the Pittsburgh. northeast. On his trips, he met with customers and gave pep talks to his sales force. And he even tried to think up ways to get his salesmen excited about selling vinegar. Prostitutos. Yeah, basically, I'm thinking the same thing. It's like, if you sell this much vinegar, you get a whore for the night. But he was a Christian man. Maybe he would tell them, I'd fix your diabetes. <laughs> that, that would work. That yeah. would, by, by not eating as much ketchup, yeah. perhaps. But, but Henry never had trouble getting excited about his own products. He was as confident as he had been as a young boy selling fresh vegetables. Wow. Still, Henry did make time to focus on his family and their home in Sharp Sharpsburg. He had a keen Sharpsburg. <laughs> That's where you are most of the time. Then. All right, Potato. Very, very funny. Everybody in this house is a comedian. I, well, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, no. What are you looking for? I'm no, looking for a bow. Just for, for a bagel. Oh, oh. I remember yeah. I needed to get a bow. Good idea. Potato, we're not going to use a red bow because that's for you. Should I get a blue bow for geckles? Yeah. Yeah, blue is nice that's or green. That's one up there. Look at that one. What's a good bow for? Oh, uh, this is for our next door neighbor who just had the hernia. We're giving him a. Oh, you okay? Yeah, that was my calendar that fell. All right. Um, maybe a light blue? Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. Is that pretty or dark blue? Oh, I don't know. Show me. Um, ooh, your choice. Your the choice. Dark blue is open. Light blue. Light blue. Light blue. Okay. But his card is. Uh, oh, his card is also blue? No, his card is orange. Does this go with orange? Hey, it's a card. Maybe what about a gold bow? Gold is good. Is that, look at this. This bag has only silver. This one is gold. That's funny. Huh. Well, we may have used a couple of them. Everything's falling out there. Oh, it's, it's all right. That's very good. Oh, look what we potato wants. Uh oh, here we go. You can talk and I'll potato wants to give you something. Well, anyway, Heinz had a keen interest in technology, new technology, and the telephone was the latest thing. Did Heinz ever work in the jungle? I don't think so. Oh, it's a oh. backdrop, you know that? It's a what? It's a backdrop we got for you. Oh, yeah. No, I haven't. I don't know why I've never used that. We should. Apparently, I'm dropping but, everything, so I'm not going to touch it. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick that up yeah. later. So. Oh, here, Ma, this is a product Mr. Heinze made, too. Here. Mommy will give 
Oh, show me, show me. What was this? Oh, mmm. Yes, we haven't opened this yet. No, we did. Oh, we did. We opened this? Oh, we flung. We did try flinging them. Yeah. Yeah. Sardine flingers, traditional recipe, made in China. Please keep this information for future reference. Color, contents, and results may vary. Not suitable for children under three due to the presence of small parts which may represent a choking hazard, adult supervision required um, and distributed by RMS International in North Andover, Massachusetts. Includes five, count them five, count them five, sardine flingers, slingers. There we go. So, all right, potato. Well, let's get back to the telephone because uh, Alexander, <clears throat> excuse me, Alexander Graham Bell yeah. perfected the I phone. That's right, in 1876. He's a bad boy. And bad only two years for later. Life. Bad boy for life. He, he, no, he was not a bad Alexander Graham Bell was not a bad boy. Oh, not a bad boy at all. If not for him, we wouldn't have the cell phone. I that is true. Oh, phone. well, true. Yeah. So the first phone appeared in Pittsburgh in 1878. And three years later, Henry had a phone line hung between his house and the house where his mother lived. That's terrible. Why would he want to talk to his nana? Well, I'm sure Nana is very proud. Nana ran away. Oh, I know, I know. Her Nana ran away after the Italian boy got in trouble. What, what my wife is talking about, well, no, what Potato is talking about is that in our car we have a, another Potato who is an Italian grandmother. My Nana. We call her Nonna, Nana, Nana, Nana. She's my Nana. And ever since the whole Luigi thing, uh, she's worried about his connected family, as it were, so, yeah. In 1886, the Heinzes took a family vacation to visit Henry's parents' homeland of Germany. So they set off by train from Pittsburgh to New Jersey and boarded an ocean liner and sailed across the Atlantic Ocean. Their first stop was England, and Henry brought samples of some of his best products to visit a company in London that sold groceries. To his delight, the company agreed to sell Heinz ketchup, horseradish, and other products, I'm guessing Spotted Dick was in there, that Henry would ship from the United States. And as the trip went on, Henry visited different factories to see how European manufacturers processed their own products. And in Germany, he visited the, the house where his father had lived as a boy. When the trip was over, Henry returned to Pittsburgh with many new ideas for his own factories and had taken his first step toward running a global <laughs> yes, a global provider of dietetes, H. J. Hines. Well, that was chapter four oh of the magnificent book. Oh my God! Who was H. Who wants to read this? What? Any, anybody interested in ketchup? Anybody interested in Hines? Except for some reason, you potato. You wouldn't have this if it wasn't for the guy who wrote this book. Here, have some ketchup. Factory and get some I, I, you know, there would not. I'm just gonna say, there's nothing that would make me happier. You than, could do a dressed as a potato. I, I have no conferences in Pennsylvania, but if I ever did. Well, if we go back to the old house, I also have a ketchup costume. You could bring your cat. Well, no, don't bring that because it's not licensed product. Oh, whoops! Yeah, whoops. I don't want to do whoops. that. They would take it off you immediately. Yeah, that. Well, Is I it, bought it. I can't have you know, them arrested yeah, if they did that. Like, you know, you have to have licensed product. Well, true, true. Anyway, that was chapter four of uh, this fella, Michael Bergens, illustrated also by Stephen Marchese, or Marchese, who was H.G. Hines from uh, the book company. It's an official Who HQ book. So, um, Potato, I hope you found some parts of the book somewhat. Oh, jeez, was boring. <sighs> Potato, what? What's a book? He's vexing like? me. Vexing my last He's... nerve with my diabetes. I gotta stay calm. All right, stay calm, potato. It's all right, potato. Everything will be okay. Give me the diabetes. <laughs> We're watching the Dave's Gone Pie Facebook your podcast, your programming of the air with me, Dave Lefkowitz, my adorable and darling wife, as well as Pooey is with us. Potato, of course, is with I us too. I have a meditation kit. You got some coloring. Oh, and and. 
and diabetes. chickens are with us, sloths chickens are with us, diabetes. and the diabetes. Don't have diabetes. They, no, they, they wouldn't. They, they, they wouldn't. No diabetes. Anyway, we still have uh, one or two things to do on this episode of the show, including our Colorado Limerick of the Damned, uh, where we're going to bloom Colorado. Bloom, a ghost town in Colorado, will be the location of our Colorado Limerick of the Damned. But before we get to that, it's only fair to celebrate the Friends of the Neighborhood. No, we're done with story time, Potato. This is Friends of the Neighborhood. Friends of the Neighborhood are people who have been on this show. Wow. I've got to get my, my ball amputated in the next week because I got the diabetes now. He's going to, if Patel keeps eating as much ketchup as he does, he's going to lose one of these. I'll, I'll get the gouts. He's got, he keeps saying he's got the diabetes, David. I don't know if he has. Do you know What's the difference between diabetes and gout? Gout is different. All right. I'm not, I, I don't know why they're different, though. But You don't want to know. Oh, oh, oh no, I don't. I got the diabetes. I had a boss who had gout uh, many, many years ago. And... and since he, he let me go, he, he uh, fired me at some point. Uh, I'm very glad he had gout. I hope it gave him tremendous pain. No. Mm, yeah. He's dead now. So his, his pain has ceased, and so has mine. But anyway, the friends of the neighborhood are people who have been on this show from very first months that we were on the air all the way up to this year. So, yeah, we've been on the program, doing the program for 22 years. Friends of the neighborhood are like family. We like to check up on them and see what they're up to and share with you and say, hey, here's what our Why people. Have the <laughs> Some of them probably do. I love it. It's Beethoven's Violin Concerto in D, which we play under, just to have a little music play on. But these are the friends of the neighborhood for yes. this week. So Saturday, December 14th, 2024. Well, first of all, um, well, we, well, we mentioned the loss of Kreskin earlier in the show. So we, we wish the friends and whatever family that George Kresge, a.k.a. Kreskin, had. Uh, we... we send our condolences. He passed away at the age of 89 earlier this week. Someone who is still alive but not doing well that we want to give a shout out to is our friend of the neighborhood, musician Peter Yarrow. Peter, of course, from Peter, Paul, and Mary. His daughter, Bethany, has been posting on Facebook and she, she said, quote, he's been battling cancer now for some time and it has been a long road and he has been a strong dragon. <laughs> but right now, uh, Peter is very weak, and he's 86 years old. His dragon days are numbered. So they're asking people if they loved his music, if they loved Peter, Paul, and Mary, uh, and, and the long stretch that he and Paul lived by the sea. If you have any memories of Peter Yarrow, there's a website that Bethany is kind of curating of people with their memories of Peter and what he meant to them and what his music meant to them. So while he's still alive and while he can still you know, um, he can enjoy it. understand, he can hear from fans and friends and so forth. He's got the diabetes. Uh, no, he is worse, as it were, than, than diabetes. So we wish him... Uh, oh, it's worse than diabetes. Well, something that's going to kill you, like kill you. So, yeah, he's not going to get better. It's not a Rafua Shlemot, but it's a... a no, I'm no, no, I'm not. But best wishes to Peter Yarrow and his family, our friend of the neighborhood. In happier news, want to let you know that Andrew Farris, who was a musician, of course. Who's that? Your friend who got hit by the car in Thailand. Who's that? Your friend who got hit by the car in Thailand. The one who got hit by the car in Thailand. Thailand. Who was? I don't know who. The was Philippines. 
The guy who got on Facebook who got hit by the car. Oh, oh, you're, I'm sorry, you're so right. Oh, That's about him. Uh, Bill Kirkenbauer. No, I haven't checked. Last week we, we gave you a, an update on Bill Kirkenbauer, who was in Thailand and hit by a car and sent to this magnificent hospital overnight, where it's like you get a room that's bigger than the size of this room right here. Uh, he seems to be fine. I'm sure he's home and recuperating and doing just great. But our shout out to Bill Kirkenbauer. Um, no, this is Andrew Farris. He is... Um, or was, songwriter, co-singer, major player in the band In Excess, if you remember them from their Hey Hey. He was a drugger. I know, I know. I don't think he was. He killed himself, the guy. Like the other Hutchins guy? Oh, maybe. Yeah, but not Andrew Farris. Who's the, what was the guy's name? Hutchins. Hutchins. Yeah. So Hutchins was kind of the lead presence and the he singer and the matinee singer. idol. Andrew Farris was, was, you know, in the backseat, but co-writing all these songs. Now, he's moved into the country vein. He's kind of like that hoogie in the blowfish fella. And he's making his debut at the Grand Ole Opry. Country music is bad. Well, Boring. I have to agree with you on that one, Potato. But not, but not Andrew Farris's country music. So check him out. He'll be at the Grand Ole Opry tonight in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, December 14th. So congratulations to Andrew. Uh, is Nashville real? Uh, yes. Is it a place? It's in Tennessee. We've never been. That's a place I would like to go see. I'd love to visit Nashville. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to Graceland. Do, 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 do. Our friends went there. I just heard that song again this week. It's, it's a, a classic. Our friends, remember, no, my friend thinks Elvis is Turkish. Well, Elvis has a show of a Turkish look, and, and he had a Jewish grandfather. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was his name? Shlomo Presley? <laughs> well, like Ellis Island, they shortened it from like Preslowitzkenstein or something like that. I think his real name was Cohen. Preslashovsky. Elvis, Elvis Cohen. Yeah. Oh. You know, you don't hear the name Elvis anymore. Where was it from? Who picked that name? I've never heard it again. You know, that is a good question. Because a lot of people get named Frank or Bob or there's Jonies. And things like that, and Fiona's. Where? That's a good question. Where? The name Elvis is not biblical, is it? Oh, come on! This computer is so slow. That's why I got a new one. Come on, open up. Thank you. The name Elvis. That's a really good. Well, probably a derivation like Elvira, a male name. Oh. What? Tell me. A male name yeah. that first appears as. Saint Elvis, a medieval Wales and Celtic figure. Was the mom Celtic? Yeah. Um, the saint's name is given as Elfwig in, in Welsh, Elv and Elvis in later English that translations. Is that Who knew? Well, I guess they named it after a saint of some sort. Um, there was Elvis. Oh, there's Elvis Costello, but that was a fake name. And there is a... a film critic named Elvis Mitchell, who used to write for the New York Times, maybe still does. Are there any other famous Elvises? He's the first Elvis, that's what I'm curious. Well, the first American, like, oh, there's some, Elvis Trujillo, I think I've heard of him. Uh, Elvis Duran, I, he's, he's a radio host, I have heard of him. Um, except Elvis Duran was Barry Brian Cope, that was his real name. And these were after Elvis Presley. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah. wondering if there is anyone, a famous Elvis, or where she got the name. Maybe in Wales. There were other Elvi. Uh, I would love to know where she got I'm sure they announced oh. it in the show. Well, 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 Elvis himself, his father, his father's full name was Vernon Elvis Presley. Oh, so, so he took his father's middle name, where his father got Elvis from. Yeah. I wonder, was Elvis Welsh in some way, or that family? Potato. Potato thinks he's part potato. And it's an old Norse name from Albus meaning all wise. Hmm. It's still a rare and kind of unusual name. Hmm. Oh, well, how interesting. Anyhow, anyhow, how we get there? Oh, um. Well, he asked a question. We'll remind you that this is your last weekend to catch Leia Forster in her one woman show, That's Yentertainment, at Theater for the New City, playing today and tomorrow. Off, off, Broadway. Sunday, uh, tomorrow, December 15th, 
Tom Tose is having his songwriter kind of circle thing. Uh, it's more actually it's, it's more of an urban. <laughs> what, what? It's like well not toes like toes but T O C E Tom Tose. And he's being joined by Christine Lavin, our beloved friend. She does. She's at. They're both at the Winter Rhythms Festival being held by Urban Stages over in Midtown. And then also on Sunday, you can catch the matinee, Jessica Schur doing Betty Davis Aim for Sissies at the Triad Theater up on 72nd Street. She's getting so much traction with that show. Yeah, that's beautiful. You want, want, want me to show that on camera? Oh, okay. Um, my wife is coloring, doing her coloring book thing for mindfulness. Um, and then on Sunday evenings, so you can see Jessica Schur in the afternoon, and then go see Becca Kidwell at Don't Tell Mama Sunday night at 7. And then on Monday, it's Michael Colby's Holiday Regards, featuring Robert Cuccioli and Carol Demas, three of our friends of the neighborhood. That's also part of the Urban Stages Winter Rhythms Festival happening on West 30th Street. Oh my God, what's playing behind me? And they finished up the Beethoven and now they're playing um, the Rolling Stones. Oh great, I'll probably get blocked on YouTube because I've got the Rolling Stones oh, bitch playing under me. All right, that's better. Here, here's Beethoven again. Where's Beethoven? Oh, there, okay. Why don't you get blocked for Beethoven? Isn't that such a Um, yeah, well, no, it jumped to a Rolling Stones number for some reason. I mean, I mean it's so yeah, it's so it's a public domain thing. Anyway, um, speaking. Of, oh no, no, something different. Monday, this Monday, December sixteenth, Andre De Shields and J. O. Sanders will both be appearing in a benefit reading of Two Gentlemen of Verona, not the Shakespeare play, but the musical, uh, based on the Shakespeare play. John Guare, I think, had a hand in that for the Red Bull Theater Company. Those are the folks who who produced virtually my one act play a couple of years back so let's support red bull also on monday kt sullivan and jeff harner doing we love the winter weather that is at birdland um uh, where's Birdland? over i used to have the, the address on that but it's birdlandjazz.com for tickets oh all right here's this is gorgeous look at this my wife just colored this there's one thing I don't think I have to raise. Well, oh, you're going to leave that white or, or yeah, yeah. That's, that's so pretty. Thank you, darling. And look, look, it says uh, hummingbirds sucking nectar out of the thing. You're handsome, darling. Thank you. Uh, what else we got here? Tuesday, this Tuesday, Annie Corzin is taking part in a benefit for Home Again LA. And it's at F Flappers in Burbank. Only Burbank would have a club called Flappers. Uh, that is in California. So if you happen to be on the West Coast on Tuesday, That's go see where Annie Corson. Tony lives. Who? And Tony lives in Burbank Felicia. Oh, yes, that is correct. Yeah. Uh, so they can go see Annie Corson. They can, well, well, closer to us, actually, at Arena Stage in Washington, D.C. This is where um, our friend of the neighborhood today, Johanna Day, she got that Helen Hayes Award for doing I the Rainmaker. Helen Hayes Award. Well, yeah. Um, at Arena Stage, can, you have until the end of the month to see Death on the Nile, the Agatha Christie adaptation done by Ken Ludwig. It's playing this week and next, and then up through the 29th of December in Washington, D.C. Julie Halston is on Broadway in Our Town. Alan Menken's music is on Broadway in Aladdin. K.T. Sullivan holds court Tuesday evenings at the Algonquin. Uh, Vince Giordano and the Nighthawks, they do two shows on Monday evenings at Birdland. Jim Caruso's cast party every Monday night at Birdland. Get your tickets, birdlandjazz.com. Uh, Michael Garin plays piano at the Roxy Hotel Tuesdays through Saturdays in Tribeca. And then we've got Evan Seplow is the founder and editor of StageBuddy.com, a wonderful website about New York nightlife, and TheaterLife.com, CulturalDaily.com, and TobalTheater.com all carry the Broadway and off-Broadway theater reviews of our friend David Sheward. Shout out to Charlie Gross and Leslie Hoban Blake 
will co-host the theater review show Two on the Aisle, and a shout out, of course, Here to Vicky Claudia. Let's charge. Let's charge. Let's charge. Let's charge when you you uh, take a lesbian and put her on an open Charles. spit. Charles. 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 Charlie, which is last name Charlie. Hey. Yeah. Well, it could be let's see, Grobla for Gross and Blake together doing I Two on the Aisle. And what else? Oh, and Vicky Quaddy out in Chicago. Yeah, what show she do? Christmas oh, she's doing all the she's Christmas, Christmas bingo. Christmas yeah, this is this is the time mm -hmm. when Vicky Quaddy, who does who created co-created late night catechism, doing all these nun shows. Go check her out in Chicago. And these, my friends, are the friends of the Daverhood. All right, all right. The only thing sadder than the music for our friends of the neighborhood is the fact that we have to do one more segment on this episode of Dave's Gone By. You know what it is. Yeah. It is poetical. Hey, wait. How did, hang on. This not get printed. Thank you very much. What? I want you to understand that there's a goat here, but there's like human hair stuck to the bottom of the goat. <laughs> that is actually human hair like, that we were using as a wig for one of our bald potatoes. Oh. But this is your head hair. This is not yeah, your my head hair. It's not pubes, no. I hope, I think. No. Uh, there it is. There it is. Please remove it, sir. Oh, no, it's stuck to this. I'm not even going <laughs> to. I'll take it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Thank you for that. Anyway, that is appropriate for our Colorado Limerick because what I've been doing for many years now is because we lived in Colorado for about 13 years, I started writing poems about all these different places in the state of Colorado. And every week I bring you a brand new one. Well, we're doing it again this week. This time we go to Bloom, Colorado. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it and then read my horrible, disgusting, and quite... Well, it's, it's a bit dirty. It's really more sick. But it's our Colorado limerick of the damned. You're the poet a limerick is a comic verse of five lines, in which lines one, two, and five will end with words that rhyme. And likewise, verses three and four also end with words that rhyme. So, this is a limerick. So let me tell you a little bit about Bloom. Bloom, Bloom, Colorado, which no longer exists. It is what they call a... It's not even a ghost town. It's an extinct town. They probably bulldozed it and turned it into something else. But it's in southeastern Colorado. was named after a cattleman named Frank Bloom. And the town had a post office for about 40 years. From eight, or, yeah, no, 30, yeah, 40 years. From 1899 through 1938. That's really all the information that Wiki or anybody has about Bloom, Colorado. However, it is not to be confused with Bloom County, Colorado, which is not a county, it's a pot dispensary. <laughs> so, you know, Colorado. But no, this is different. This is the, the long lost town of Bloom, but it did exist. And therefore, we have <clears throat> our Colorado limerick of the damned. Ready? A dirty old psycho from Bloom. Wait, 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 what's the matter? Oh, thank you. A dirty, we'll do this one more time. A dirty old psycho from Bloom would trap little boys in his room. He'd strap firecrackers to their tally whackers then light all their fuses, and BOOM!
Yes, nothing funnier than child abuse in the morning, my friends. So if you have any comments or complaints or problems, remember you can email me Dave's Gone By at AOL.com. Dave's Gone By at AOL.com. I read everything that comes in. I just don't get a chance, especially this time of year, to respond necessarily. You can also uh, post messages to me on the Facebook page or direct message me there. And check out my Twitter feed, Radio Dave 2. Plus, um, what else? I never did give you Rabbi Saul's website, which is shalomdammit.com. Shalom, D A W M I T, shalomdammit.com. Remember that you can go to my webpage, davesgoneby.com, for all my archives, as well as the archives on archive.org. We have a channel there. We have an audio archive channel at castbox.fm. We also have a YouTube channel, Dave's Gone By. Lots of ways to find all our content. And please also remember that a whole different website, davelefkowitz.org, is the place to read my interviews, my articles, my song lyrics, my one act and full length plays, a couple of screenplays in there, just all the stuff that I physically put on paper rather than just extemporized on the air. <gasps> Go to davelefkowitz.org. All right, potato. You were, you've been really, really obstreperous today. Not boring. But not boring. Not yeah. boring. So we're going to give Ow, you some. Oh, my diabetes. Yeah, this is the cheap stuff, though. This is the, this is the stuff that has, like, corn syrup oh, and sawdust and, and, and antibiotics in it. Oh, I feel it's curing my diabetes. Good, Tastes curing, good. Curing my diabetes. Oh, oh. Now, potato, can you? Oh. Potato, do you feel anything? Wait, I gotta give you the pincher. You got the pincher. Oh, the pincher is, is in there. It's in the. It's literally in the plastic packet there. Here we go. Yeah. Oh boy, it's gonna like it. It's red. So toss it at me. I'll try and grab it. I can't toss it because it'll hurt you. You want to take this temperature and see if he's okay? Uh, do we have a rectal? Uh, okay. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Okay. Now, we got, potato, we let me tell if you're feeling and anything. A rectal thing here. Nothing. 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 Ow! Okay, he's, he's not quite numb. Oh, good. Okay. I heard that scream. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we have the, the spread. What is, is this? The, oh, this is the thermometer. Okay. Oh, oh, God. oh God, no. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 sweet mystery of life. At last I found Does you. Do you have a fever? Oh. Uh, no, he's fine. He's completely okay. fine. And let, let's, let's just check. Oh, we'll check one other thing. Um... Let's test, test the sinuses. He blinded me with sinus. Yeah, He's fine. You can do his feet too. Give him oh, his feet. Yeah, it's open. Oh, oh, yeah, it does. Pinch, yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> whoa. oh, you're ticklish. He's doing better. He's getting some some feeling back in his, his little. My diabetes is cured. I saw the light. I saw the light. That boring lines book saved me. That's not in my mouth. Okay, that's better than that. There we go. There we go. Wow. Wow. Potato's been all on it today. I feel the way about ketchup the way you feel about the prime rib at Mission Barbecue, Daddy. You understand now. I understand. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> you've been watching Dave's Got Mine with me, Dave Lefkowitz, my wonderful wife. Thank you again to Johanna Day. Make sure you go see her in the play Ping Pals which is playing at the theater at St. Clement's on 46th Street. I think it's between 8th and 9th Avenue. It might be between 9th and 10th. Um, but, but it's on Restaurant Row there. So go see her. You have uh, two more weeks to catch Pen Pals, which just opened the other day. So go see it, please. And thank you again to Joe Trent Acosta for setting up the yeah, Johanna Day Joseph interview. Trentle, Anything else we want to talk about before we... We close up shop for this particular. Yeah, I think go shopping and you get your num nums. I'll get my num nums. Anything else happen to us? I don't have my pictures. We deleted a lot of them. I can't remember. Well, we deleted. They would have been old. They would have been from the week before. Let's see Monday. We had final. We took the teacher. Yeah, no, we're not Tuesday gonna talk about. Finals. Yeah. Wednesday. Thursday. Yeah, our life goes by in a blur. We shop, no, we, there was we drive. No, there was nothing. It was a quiet week, which is good. Which is good. Which is obviously, you know, we're happy for the well, they quiet. They did the tree trimming. That was great. They tree trimmed all the um, 
what do you call like be, they have to bring in special crews for the electric wires right yeah which means our we don't have to pay our gardeners to do it because yeah. our gardeners were charged like 75 dollars a branch oh, but, 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 it, but they go up in the now, bucket David. i don't know why you're so bitter you, this is what i'm bitter about everything so you want to do it you get I, up and do no, it. no no that's the problem but you know if i could do it if i could get up on a thing and, you and David, you, listen if you saw the blood spurting out of my thing you would have died and passed out <laughs> That's called menstruation, dear. No, oh, no, you that's recently. I, was... <laughs> I haven't done that in twenty something years. Neither have I. <laughs> what else? What else? So, uh, in the world, do we want to talk about Luigi or? or... I feel really. I just think it's a horrible. It, I think it, a lot of people knew him or knew his family, like at school. A lot of people had connections because it's local, oh. and it's really sad. You know, I think that it's just it's. He's not a folk hero. No, no, I think no, it's, he's, people see him as Robin Hood. No, they see well, him. People, you know, social media goes up, but I'm worried because, like, that's not a good. It's just a, it's upsetting to me on many levels. Well, yeah. Because I'm someone who has you know chronic stuff, but like, if this kid had that neck surgery, if that was really true, like, there's oh, a lot okay. of bad, like. But let me ask you: Would you? Yeah. I, I know. I, if, yeah. if the CEO of United Healthcare yeah. had died in like a skiing accident, I, no, I would not be happy. Because I'm not happy for somebody's death. I'm not happy for anyone's death. I think mm -hmm. that, you know, like, what I would want to understand is, for me, what drives somebody to that extreme measure? And, like, for me, like, I know people do stuff, right? People are people. But, like, I wish people had more checks and balances in their life that somebody could have helped them. Oh, yeah. You know, because this was about his family. Yeah, this yeah. was not about, no. unfortunately. No, no, it was no. not this thing like, my cause is bringing down the horrible American health care. So it was more like my family's involved in health care. No, but he had, yeah. a man, he had a manifesto like that. He did have he did, he did, yeah. yeah. But I think, like, for me, like, I don't know. I think what makes me sad, and I don't believe in social capital and these theories, but it's like, why wouldn't there be somebody who, like, you know, like we had a, a another job as somebody who's very violent at work. It's like, but why won't people stop it? Like, why won't, you know, like, wouldn't, like, he right. lived with roommates. He had roommates. Like, why wouldn't a roommate say, like, there's something going on with, on with him? We what can, what do you do? What can you do? Sort of institutionalizing you a person. You call somebody for help. You call the family. You call a uh, hospital. You call a, uh, Yeah, remember we, yeah. we tried calling a friend for oh, a friend. Yeah. And it was like, no, I can't deal anymore. She's, she, well, we have a close friend who was nuts. A religious leader, yeah. Yeah, and he was like, Nah, I'm, I'm sorry she's going through whatever she's going through, but please yeah, don't but bother me. I don't know me. if that's the case here. I feel like what makes me really sad is like, you know, if we have mental health crises and people are really struggling, I just wish that people would seek help. You know, that's what makes me very sad. No like, kidding. You know, no, yeah, yeah. I'll make, that's the thing. People will seek help and then they're denied coverage by United yeah, Healthcare. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the irony. Yeah, I mean, you know, my thing with health insurance is it's the reason, my main reason for, like, I need it. So I can't be without it ever. Right. And I think that, you know, it sets up a system. But even in countries where you have it, you may not have access to what you want, right? There may be all these issues. So Yeah, it's not like national health is always such a wonderful but at alternative. At least you have a safety net. Uh, well, Obamacare was supposed to be a safety net, ha ha, which Obama. it is, if, uh, but unless you're middle it's, class. It's not called Obamacare, it's affordable, affordable care. Affordable care, so, so, yeah, fine, let's call it affordable care, it's still a piece of shit. Yeah, well, but it gives people access to insurance they wouldn't have otherwise, so it's not a piece of shit. Yeah, but the people who had insurance are just paying through the nose for the people who didn't. That's not true either. That's not true either. Well, then, then you know, the, I don't know what to do. Because the reason they started the Affordable Care Act was that healthcare was already unaffordable, yeah. so they tried to make so it was already out of control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's an industry. Oh yeah, well everything's a, yeah. You know, everything's an industry. Yeah. Do we go back to the thing of like having this whole legion of who, who would really be heroes or doctors who just said we're not going to be part of this? I uh, we're we're just going to you come to us. We have yeah, somewhat you, reasonable you rates. You, you pay us. You, they can't do that because. They need to get reimbursed by that system, and they need, and they need, they need it because they need to be in malpractice. So they need to set high rates too. I mean, it's a, yeah. it's a whole system. I just feel bad that it had to come to that. Like, I just wish that, you know, it's like when you see. I watch a lot of these like cult things. Like, you oh. know, everybody's living in like in a, in a forest or something. They're all together. Like, if he lived communally, I just wish somebody would have been like, hey, 
like we gotta like something. Yeah, they see his notebook and they yeah, see Zodiac like, killer. Because yeah. people probably if you know he, he I don't know I just wish that somebody could have intervened. You know like that's always my feeling like there has to be a way to intervene. Right, but at the same time, what was it? It was some something just got settled. What? It wasn't a healthcare thing, but. There was something, it was just in the news this morning. I'm trying to remember what it was. I'm forgetting. But some company, mm -hmm. oh, 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 no, it, 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 the New York it? Post covered this. Yeah. It was, and, I, and I'm ashamed to say this, huh. but it was this Jewish landlord in New York who owns all these properties mm -hmm. in Manhattan. The Lemore, so and so, Moskowitz, Hollerowitz company, whatever, Lemore, the main landlord mm -hmm. guy, and cited for violations more than any other landlord company in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Known for buildings with like mold in the bathrooms that oh, never wow. goes over, with rats and, and you know, just, just being the yeah. ultimate like Jew slumlord mm -hmm. that, that people, you know, use as an anti-Semitic trope. This guy deserves it, right? Mm -hmm. So magically, after years of fighting and delaying and not fixing and doing it, suddenly they, they're paying like, X million dollars to settle a suit, and to, because, because probably Lee Moore is looking over his shoulder. People like him are like, yeah. you know, is there a, a Luigi coming for me, finally? But I just don't like violence. I don't think it's ever the... Yeah. I mean, like, to me, it, it, it's a false thing because that person is not the company, right? Like, if I die, they're going to replace me with somebody else, right? No individual yeah, well, yeah, is the company. So to... I don't understand why... You would think that removing an individual would affect the company. They're going to promote somebody else, right? right. Like but but it puts the fear. What one? Oh, that's what you're saying. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, it is kind of the yeah. thing of like nobody can nobody give a shit about immigration until somebody uh, until the guy in Texas, the governor, started sending all these immigrants to Midtown oh, Manhattan yeah. and to California. And said, like, you know, yeah, you don't care. You're left wing. You believe that everybody has a right to live and to be free here, and it's a Statue of Liberty. Let's <laughs> give you my problem here of these people who have no place to go and no support system, and we have to feed them and care. We're gonna put them on buses, and now you're going to actually see them in your part of the woods. Now, oh, oh, it's a problem. I think it's just we have there's systemic problems that we need to. Yeah, it's just horrible. I think it's. But what I find really interesting, and I don't know if it's true, but they said that that CEO guy was getting threats, like he got threats. So yeah. what I don't, this is what I don't understand. Yeah. If you, if somebody gives you a threat and you're in that position, why wasn't he with bodyguards? That's the one thing I don't get. Like, I'm not even. How many how many like, threats per week do you think Donald Trump? No, but gets? he has a uh, yeah, and look what happened. He yeah. shot twice. Or no, shot but, at twice. No, but what I'm saying is yeah. this guy probably had. A, they said he had a security force with, you know, not with Not them, Luigi. Luigi? No, no. Oh, the, oh, the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. So, like, what I don't get is, like, if especially if you know, like, you're being threatened, wouldn't you have more security? That's There's only I so get. much. I mean, you would, but at the same time, yeah. uh, you know, how do you live? How does every Hollywood star, because every once in a blue moon, a Hollywood star gets picked off. Yeah. And there, something terrible happens to yeah. them. And that's just, you yeah, bodyguard is not literally walking, unless you're Taylor Swift, walking no, in front of you. I and, think that's yeah. what they do. They they look at the um, area and they clear it out and then they make sure that you could go in a way that's... And you know what? Presidents um, have still been shot. I know. Not just Trump. I mean, Reagan you know, was Squeaky Jeff Frome got... Reagan. At, Reagan was an attempted assassination. Yes. Yeah, Reagan was hit. Reagan. Yeah. Carter. And, but all of them. Carter was yeah, shot yeah, at. Yeah. Uh, Ford. I would forget these because they weren't hit. And they're Washington, <laughs> Washington. Uh, well, McKinley, right? <laughs> they got him. I just, it makes me so sad. It's just really saddening. There's like, you know. I, I mean, it is, sad. it is sad that you've got mental health issues, and yeah. it's sad that it, it's come to this. Mm -hmm. But let's also be sad that people hate our health providers mm -hmm. so much, I know. and our insurance providers so much, mm -hmm. that it triggers, literally triggers this mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yes. That, I mean, I I see both sides of it. I don't see Luigi as a great man or a hero or somebody I want walking around picking off people who <laughs> piss him off. It's not the way to go. The the but at the same time, it would be lovely if United Healthcare collapses and, and something better comes in its wake, and and then Aetna and travelers 
and you don't farmers. Even have insurance names. <laughs> those, those were all. They're not an insurance company. Travelers, farmers, yes, they no. are. Not we right. are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. What are they then? I'm not telling you. Well, look, those are insurance. Health United is a. Healthcare. But, was United a provider, though? It's, no, it's a healthcare company that gives a healthcare yeah. insurance. Yeah. But even the are. providers, too. I mean, just the, what people have to go through to try and stay healthy or get healthy in this country. I mean, they're all for staying healthy, so you don't have to use them and, and you know. You pay your premium. They want you healthy paying your premiums. They just don't want you cashing out on them. And we'll do anything to delay. Anywho. Anywho. We've been calling this episode. Boring. All right. All right. Boring. Oh Seize God. the day. I need to see someone about my diabetes. Give me my ketchups. All right. Give me we... both ketchups. All right. Both of them. All right, hold well, on. I got a massive diabetes attack. All right, hold I on. I got keto ankylosis. <laughs> Taylor, you're oh, on it today. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. This is the straight stuff. I'm going to Mission Barbecue. Do they have ketchup? Yes. Oh. Yeah, they, they, they do. They have a lot of it. They do. Oh. All right, potato. Good I need potato. My diabetes treatment. Oh. Oh. I think uh, I think we need to. You take a swig, Daddy. Okay. I'll I'll, I'll do the cheap stuff. Mm. Save mm. us for your steaky and your diabetes. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been watching the nine. I don't know why you've been watching, but you've been watching the nine hundred and seventy-first episode of the Dave's Gone By Facebook Yo Podcast Yo Brand Yo of the Stream. We will be back next Saturday, December twenty-first, with the nine hundred and seventy-second episode of the show. Not sure who the guest will be or if we'll have a guest. But we'll do our thing. We'll have Bunyan watch. We may even have my old plan. Plus, we'll have story time. And we'll have Greeley times and more of this. So thank you for watching. Thank you again to Johanna Day. Thank you to my wonderful, adorable, and amazing wife. Thank you and, and best of love and shout out to our uh, mutual families and to all of you out there. We will see you. Soon and gone. Oh, I haven't played the gone by music. How dare I? Dave's gone by. Ooh.